Hello dear viewers, thank you for choosing the Manwa compilation channel. Please leave feedback in the comments after watching, enjoy watching. It was the world's first virtual reality RPG. The top of the gaming rankings has long been occupied by the King of the End Guild, and today seven days have passed since the disappearance of the team leader. The walls of the cave shook from the monster's wild roar. To defeat him and help their colleague, the guild members decided to use the control effect, a technique that would deprive the enemy of the opportunity to fight at full strength. The blonde elf loaded her crossbow and pulled the string. Her partner also shot an arrow, but their attack did not cause any damage to the monster. And now, angry, he rushed around himself, tearing the ground with his claws and rushing at the players. From time to time he spewed fire from his mouth, burning everything to the ground. And now the monster, being in its lair, was desperately defending itself. When the smoke began to clear, he reached forward to find out if his opponent was dead. The iron armor melted from the heat and there were a lot of abrasions on his face, but he was alive. Moreover, I didn't even lose a tenth of my health. But then the young man heard someone's confident steps approaching. And then the leader of the guild, the King of the End, came to his aid to deal the final blow to the monster. It seemed that his mere presence made the monster afraid. The leader grinned. The monster's damage began to drop little by little. The leader himself believed that there was nothing surprising in victory over a weak opponent. And coming closer to the monster, he began to pull the sword out of its sheath. But before his hand firmly grasped the hilt of the sword, he turned his signature swing in the air. Then he bent down as if at the start of a treadmill. A moment and dust rose in the place where he stood, and the monster realized that in order to stay alive he must make every effort. First the leader rushed around him, leaving deep wounds on the enemy's body. The monster managed to contrive and throw him away from himself, but the leader tensed his muscles and the blow did not injure him. Therefore the monster again had to fight for the right to live. And the young man with the sword inflicted injuries on him again and again, increasing the damage. His crippled partner watched what was happening with an open mouth and was glad that he was not in the monster's place, who looked around without seeing the enemy. But since the leader was in the category of the first and the top players, spectators from all over the world watched him play. The last minutes of his game were immortalized, and now the whole world was wondering where the leader of the guild, the King of the End, had gone. So Choi Yuchun, sitting at her desk, reviewed the recording over and over again. This video blew up the internet in just one week, and the game turned out to be more popular than Yu Chun thought. When the leader disappeared from the radar, users from all over the world did not react immediately. This whole situation irritated the girl, because now her friend lay unconscious and was in no hurry to return to real life. Yu Chun was brought out of his sad thoughts by the sound of a notification. Taking the phone in her hands, the girl began to read messages from her friend. It turned out that my friend was invited to an interview by a crime investigation program, because before everyone said that they didn't care about the leader, but when he stopped appearing, everyone went crazy. Such irony and hypocrisy amused Yu Chun. She told her friend not to agree to the interview, and at the end she added that now the game is not the same without a leader, to which the interlocutor asked if she wanted to switch and play the game again, and immediately began to look for alternatives. She didn't have to search for long. She recommended the game Astrum, which she was currently playing. By the way, this is where the leader disappeared, but only in beta testing. For Yu Chun, this was an opportunity to distract herself, and she followed the link. But before that, I uploaded one message as a notification for the guild. At this time, a girl named Seo Charan being the last boss and having a rank in the King of the End 6th Guild was checking feedback with other users. After several attempts, she became worried. Did something really happen to their leader since no one responded? Her partner Yan Dekin with the 4th rank had the same question. Why don't recently registered users log into the game? Charon suggested that the player may have lost consciousness since many people now quit the game due to overwork. But if this is so, then people are probably going crazy. However, at this rate, the title of the first guild leader will be taken away. Although in general there is not much difference between being the first or being the leader of the guild. But even if everyone wants to join the guild, they still have to wait for the leader. But then the girls received an urgent notification. It said that the Astrum game would be announced soon and they should be ready to announce the opening schedule. In fact, it was Yuchen who decided that their guild was planning to create an alliance in the surreal game Astrum, and now she invited all game users to join. If they agree, they must say so in the guild chat. The girls reread the message again and again, but then they agreed that their guild master seemed to want to test this game first. Meanwhile, the game software developer Astrum was having more and more problems. Together with his assistant, he bent over the physical body of the leader of the King of the End Guild. The young man's body did not react to anything and the fact that he was alive was evidenced by a quiet, moderate pulse. The developer could not find a place for himself. Why hasn't the young man woken up yet? 
Those test subjects of the beta testing of the Astrum game who were in other rooms woke up a week ago. Their health was normal and they continued to live their normal lives. After thinking a little, the developer gave the order that if the young man did not come to his senses in 10 minutes, then he should be informed about it. In general, there were no problems with the game itself. There's just one problem. The game was developed by artificial intelligence, so the developer did not have any access to the game. If Ko's boss finds out about this, he will definitely begin to reproach him. In addition, they already sent 100 beta testers from 20 countries to the unconscious young man, but he never woke up. The developer went to the boss and reported that the test subject was still in the artificial intelligence system, and asked whether he should ask to stop development. The boss tiredly took off his glasses and leaned back in his chair, after which he asked what the condition of those who woke up was. Fortunately, there were no surprises here. Everything was consistently good. Then Keo ordered that everyone continue with the final testing, because quite possibly the reason lies in the leader himself. If the problem is only with the last testing, then this is exactly what you need to think about. Meanwhile, Song Bao playing the game Astrum under the nickname Captain Raid and being the leader of the King of the End Guild continued to be in the game. But the fact that over the past few days no one he knew had come in bothered him. Exactly a week ago, the guild came across a lonely cave devil, and they decided to destroy him and take the reward for themselves. The monster had no chance against them, but at some point the leader found himself alone with the monster, but he was counting on the support of his friends. Even the monster did not expect such a setup from the guild members, but he decided not to waste time and attack the armed man standing in front of him. Our hero felt shame, realizing that he had to run away. But what should he do now? Today during dinner, there was one of the online raids and if he refuses, the developers will know about it. Reflecting on his difficult fate, our hero was sitting by the waterfall and then a monster jumped out of the water. But the young man jumped aside in time, and he stood in a fighting stance, extending his sword and tightly gripping its hilt. In front of him was the final boss monster and the fight promised to be life and death. Not a single movement of the monster went unnoticed by our hero and he repelled the first attack with lightning speed. He was so skilled that he could cut a drop of water in half on the fly. They struck with their swords, suddenly, as if thousands of sparks flew past the monster, hiding the silhouette of the enemy from him, after which the dungeon was enveloped in grey smoke. When he began to settle, the monster did not see anyone around him, and he suggested that he was probably so strong that the enemy was afraid of him and ran away. But everything was wrong. During the battle, the game system began training the player and our hero with an outstretched sword stood in the square among surprised people. Needless to say, their whispering and abundant attention confused Bao, and he hastened to sheathe his sword. When he suddenly moved to different locations of the game like that, it meant an update of the game. But this is already the 13th beta version. How come there is still training? Besides, did he move to the village? The players around him marveled at the reality of what was happening. Bao thought about it. Perhaps this is another beta test? But then someone tugged at his sleeve. Turning around, he saw a girl in front of him. She said hello and admitted that she did not see the difference between a user and an NPC, a non-player character. Her words had the same effect on the young man as if lightning had struck him, and then the game system window opened in front of him. The message stated that Bao could choose a response based on the proximity and content of the conversation with the players. And then he realized that he couldn't use his voice and it annoyed him. And the girl continued to wait for an answer from him. Our hero had two options available. He had already seen a similar game scheme somewhere. And first of all, he asked how the girl found the village in which she ended up. To this, the girl exclaimed that the young man in armor standing in front of her was an NPC. Now Bao has experienced a second shock in the last five minutes, because it is the NPCs who cannot use their will in the game. Meanwhile, the developer stood in front of the door leading to the room where the physical body of our hero lay. He took a deep breath, wondering if he had made the right decision, and he began to enter the password to enter the room. Song Bao was still sleeping peacefully. The developer decided to restart the game so that the player would wake up between breaks. Sitting down at the table, he stuck the flash drive into the system unit, and he began to diligently examine the player's condition. So far, Bao has not had any health problems, but it is quite possible that if he continues to play, he will die. Before pressing enter, the developer thought about his decision again and again. He sincerely hoped that everything would go well, and plucking up the courage to press the enter button on the keyboard, the whole room was filled with red light emanating from the technology. The developer bowed his head in his hands and began to wait. Meanwhile, our hero took two young men as his students, and now, under his leadership, they fought and gained experience with small monsters. And they did pretty well. The clay drop kept retreating back, and the monster that looked a lot like a walking tree lost its limbs again and again. Suddenly, huge wooden vines began to grow from the ground. Bao warned the trainee about the danger, and with one stroke of his sword he cut off the branches. Our hero was scratching his head and thinking, and how did he manage to contact these two idiots? But still, the conversation with that fair-haired girl gave him some information. When he repeated his question again, the girl was slightly frightened. 
but she said that she found this village during research and asked how long Bao had been here. Since the intimacy between him and his interlocutor was zero, he was given two options. The answers were so lame that our hero was surprised at the stupidity of the game developers. Still not realizing that he was an NPC, he decided to try again to answer that he had just recently arrived in the village in a voice. But Bao's speech was again monotonous. Without despair, he continued to ask why the girl was looking for other people. The interlocutor's eyes shone. She wanted to explore the village, get to know the place and help the villagers. After such a short dialogue, the intimacy between the users increased and Bao had the opportunity, if desired, to give the girl a task. This news made the young man incredibly happy. But at that moment, the game began to reboot. Our hero's body seemed to be pierced by thousands of needles and an electric current was conducted through every cell in his body. And the developer still sat waiting for the result. Spreading the fingers of his palm, he looked at the screen. The word warning appeared in red letters on a black screen. This meant that the developer did not have access rights to the game, so the game automatically switched to operation in emergency mode. The man went completely cold. Goosebumps ran through his body. Did the player really die after he interfered with the game program? Lord, what has he done? While the developer was in trouble, Song Bao got out of bed and approached him. Hearing the noise, the developer turned and screamed in fear. What scared him most was the outstretched hands of the young man. But instead of clinging to the man, Bao fell on his hands and began to do push-ups. One, two, three, four, and so on without ceasing. The developer, watching him, did not understand what Bao was doing. Such cases have never happened in his practice. He imagined how he reported this to his superiors, saying that the player died, and then began to do push-ups. Boss Keo will definitely be angry. While Song Bao was in critical condition, Choi Yuchun looked after his house. After cleaning, she washed her face and looked at her tired face in the mirror. The house of her old friend was all that connected them now. The girl took the elastic band from her hair and put it on the wash basin. After which she went into the living room and lay down on one of the sofas. Will the guild leader the king of the end ever return? When Yu Chun dozed off, she was woken up by a notification on her phone. It was the developer who wrote something to her again. Often it was news that Song Bao was still unconscious, and the company did not know how to bring him back to life. But this time, everything was different. The developer asked her not to worry about the leader, and assured her that Bao was going to return, and attached a video as evidence. When the video file was loaded, the girl for a long time could not believe that it was not Photoshop. The man dear to her heart was doing push-ups as if nothing had happened. Such news from the developer seemed to bring Yuchen back to life. She trembled and tears flowed down her cheeks. Is Bao really alive? While they tried with all their might to return our hero to the real world. The young man himself could not understand what happened this time. And I even became worried about whether everything was okay with the game. He suggested that something might have happened with the food. And then he received a message from the game. It turned out that the system has detected external access to the game system and therefore will block all external paths. And for this, it will turn on the emergency mode, but a small electrical stimulation will be applied to the player himself. Having barely read the last word of the sentence, our hero was shocked from not understanding what was happening. And he again began to experience terrible pain from the electric current. To ensure the protection of the player, the force training was completed and the system decided to start the game and Bao tried to clench his teeth as hard as possible so as not to scream in pain. And then he realized that his location would be changed again, and he turned out to be right. The world around him spun and sparkled. Like a whirlwind, he sucked the young man into himself and carried him away into the distance. Our hero's body began to disintegrate into particles and reassemble. To make loading faster, the game system will randomly select the class and role of the player. Sometimes in flight, Bao flew upside down or backwards, and sometimes he even did somersaults. Just turn off this thing, just get rid of the damn thing! He shouted, but no one was destined to hear his cries for help. Soon our hero was lucky enough to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Only his fall was not as soft as Alice from Wonderland. When Bao landed, a small crater formed in the ground below him. At first the young man gasped for air as he came to his senses, but fortunately it's all over. And then a huge wooden chest landed in front of our hero. Most likely this was a reward for completing training. Opening the chest, the young man saw various things. The first thing he did was take the sword. I checked whether the hand fits well on the handle. Whatever test is prepared for him, he will win, since he has many years of experience in playing RPGs. But then his attention was attracted by a note that was addressed to the head of the Polar Bear Knights. Our hero was given three missions. First, he needed to recruit four soldiers to reach level 20, then clear the Rat Cave dungeon. The third mission was hidden, and under the condition he could not leave the kingdom. After reading the letter, Bao guessed that it was definitely written by artificial intelligence. But that's the rub. Did the game really crash in real life? He wanted to reread the letter again, but realized that now was the time to think about other things. Bao is in the game, but why was he in pain? First, we had to think about how to disable the Astrum game from the inside. 
and raising his hands high, he lowered them down, simultaneously shouting an order to get out from behind the system. But the only thing he heard in response was an echo spreading through the forest and the cry of frightened birds. Then our hero began to remember all the known ways for him to exit the game. He repeated one of the finger combinations he knew. I even repeated it several times. This time they reacted to his words and threw a stone hammer at his face. Bao did not expect the attack and therefore failed to react and the ball rolled to the side. His opponent was a well-fed brunette. His characteristics said that his name was Shen. He swung the hammer for fun and now he wanted to beat our hero. But since the opponent was the first to inflict damage on Bao, the young man can now also attack him and thanks to this achieve new achievements. Now Bao realized that such a turn in the game would play into his hands. Until this moment he felt like a dog in many ways, but now this arrogant brunette will not just leave. And so the young man swung, but his hammer got stuck in the dry ground and while he was pulling it out, our hero took up his sword. He didn't know where this guy came from, but even if he thinks that our hero is an NPC, he is very mistaken. The brunette immediately noticed that there was something wrong here. Namely, why a young man in armor and with a sword in his hand moves like a player. But such strangeness did not frighten him. He swung again to demonstrate his fighting skills, but Bao managed to run past and damage him before Shen blinked. But the blow seemed weak to the brunette, and he concluded that our hero was attacking weakly. However, here too he was wrong. After this next hit, his damage doubled. Bao smiled. He decided to kill the enemy because he ruined his good mood. Barely catching his breath, the brunette raised his eyes to the sky and prayed, Did he really end up in a village for beginners? In the end, he got tired of fighting and decided to strike a control blow. But his axe collided with the unshakable sword of Bao. Our hero did not expect that the developers specially released a village for beginners, but he didn't care about it. In the end, Shen's hands couldn't stand it, and the guild leader, the king of the end, cut his protective armor. In between, Bao joked that if they were not in the game, then the brunette would be finished. Jumping in the air, our hero did a somersault and throwing the weapon from hand to hand, cut the enemy's torso in half. As soon as Shen fell to the ground, his body began to become transparent. And when Bao put the sword in its sheath, he disappeared completely. Our hero was incredibly proud of himself, although he felt like an adult who was proud of having taken candy from a child. As a reward for this new achievement, Bao could now attack the user without causing damage. Essentially this meant that now he could attack first, but then his smile disappeared from his face. It turns out that for killing a player he will be punished. But you didn't say anything about free kicks, Bao shouted, clenching his hands into fists. By the way, it was he who held the post of chief engineer of the Astrum game. But despite this, the game was still officially opened. Naturally, without the knowledge of the company itself, it was artificial intelligence that independently opened the game. But it was too late. In a short period of time, 722,000 users downloaded the game, and their number was growing. But the catch was that the game was still far from release. Then an out-of-breath employee ran into the company's development room. In his hands was a paper that the printer randomly printed, so he took it to the authorities. Everyone was incredibly interested in what was written there, but it turned out that there were no problems, except that the server was open. Meanwhile, our hero tirelessly trained his charges, sometimes adjusting their fighting stance, the swing of the sword, and the way they hold the hilt. At times, the guys laughed at each other's falls, but overall, the guys were not bad. The blonde young man's name was Toilette, and his partner was Tarzan. Bao understood that he clearly could not get out of the game on his own. During a break, Toilette asked the mentor if this training would really increase their strength. Our hero straightened his shoulders, raised his nose up, and ran his fingers through his hair, presenting him to the guys in all his glory. And he gave them valuable advice. To gain power, you need to be cool. At first, the students did not understand the meaning of his phrase. But in order not to look stupid, they assured that they understood, although Bao did not think that such advice would work. He did this so that there would be a glitch in the plot of the game and he would be returned back, but nothing happened. Therefore, I decided to end these attempts for now. But then should he do what the plot ascribes to him? He thought about this while watching the training of his players. Soon he told them to stop. After which he took the helmets and approached them, putting a helmet on each one in turn. Bao decided to complete the missions. Roughly speaking, he has no choice but to try. Therefore, now he decided to teach the guys to really fight through the pain of a wound and a fall. Soon our hero looked into his user window. The penalty for killing a player infuriated him every time he saw it. The plan was this. The small team was supposed to go to increase their levels. But first Bao decided to go on reconnaissance. The fact that he volunteered to do the dirty work himself delighted the guys, and they began to draw analogies about whether this was cool. Bao stepped aside and unfolded the map. If this is an adequate game, then this is the very place he needs, which is currently hidden. Taking out his sword, he cut the air several times, and there are bushes growing nearby. For authenticity, he waved his sword several more times. But his plan was thwarted. Another player was approaching him. Our hero in relation to him could ignore the connection and assign him a quest. 
Approaching closer, the player said hello and said that he had heard that in this area live queen mobs, monsters that need to be killed to complete the task, but he never found one. Our hero listened to him, trying with all his might to pretend that he knew nothing. Although it was Toilette who destroyed the log, and Tarzan spits clay snot, Bao didn't even know what to tell him. But the system immediately came to his aid, giving him two options to choose from. Either direct the player to the right place, or say that soldiers seem to be training nearby. Bao chose the first. He told the player that if he followed the rat's cave and killed the monster, he would give him a small reward. But then some strange light appeared above the guys. Raising their heads, they saw the system window. It turned out that the approaching player is a traveler, and our hero really has the opportunity to give him a quest. But due to the lack of closeness between the guys, the details of the quest were unknown. But this was enough for the player. He began to beg that Bao would grant him the quest. He even got down on his knees, which greatly surprised our hero. And he kept asking and asking. Soon Bao realized that his interlocutor was indescribably greedy, but this was inevitable for people like gaming addicts. Nodding, he agreed to the assignment. Before he had time to say goodbye, there was already no trace of the player. Bao himself did not fully understand what he was doing. But the main question that interested him now was how he could receive a reward for giving out the task. But still, in any case, he will find a reward. And putting two fingers in his mouth, he whistled. Meanwhile, in the beginner village, many players embarked on their great path of heroes. Among them were Yuchun, Chirin, and Dekin. For the first few minutes of the game, they admired the realism and even the ability to smell. Now they understand why many users switched to playing Astrum. The first thing Yuchun suggested was to register a guild first before someone uses their guild name and takes it over. But instead, Charin began to admire her friend's well-designed image. An irritated Yuchun responded in her monotonous mechanical voice by repeating that they first need to revive the guild. The girls could not find anything to object to the main guildmaster, and they followed her to the registration center. Throughout the entire area, all that was heard was heavy sighs. Even our hero joined in the hard work, which consisted in the fact that they dug up the ground meter by meter. After an hour of shoveling, Bao began to think. Everything was very strange. In this place, there should have been either a rat den or a cave. And then the same obsessive player who came with a report appeared right next to him. The traveler thought about hiding in a cave, but in reality, this is not the case. It turns out they were in the very epicenter of Christ's cave. As soon as the player spoke about this, the game system demanded that our hero reward him. He had three options. A Kingdom Explorer quest chain, a handwritten memorandum that could be exchanged for royal achievements, and two gold bars. At first, Bao didn't even know what to choose, but looking at the player's face, he realized that he needed to choose the first one. After which he thanked for the assistance provided and expressed his gratitude, and also shared a link to complete the task. Fortunately, our hero did not make a mistake with the choice of reward. This outcome made the player incredibly happy, and he inspired went on to conquer the peaks. But our hero had no time for him. First, he must clear out the rat cave. Taking out the sword, he promised himself not to leave a single rat alive. And as if on command, everyone began to search all the bushes. I didn't have to wait long. Several rats ran from the tree straight towards Bao. The young man was not at a loss and cut them with one movement of his sword. The fact is that after the user completed the task, rodents always began to appear. While there was time, he shouted to the trainees to cover each other and also pay great attention to the small trees. But there was something else. The difficulty level of this obstacle was too easy. So besides this, there is something else. After looking around, our hero chose the largest tree and jumped, after which he kicked with all his might against the tree trunk. And it was as if a cat landed nearby. Such a powerful blow should not have gone unnoticed by the leader of the cave rats, and Bao was ready to greet him with a warm welcome. Meanwhile, members of the guild whose leader had recently disappeared had already reached the registration office. Throwing a gold penny onto the desk, Yuchun said the name of the guild, King of the End. The registrar did not immediately understand what the girl meant and asked her to repeat. But it soon became clear that yesterday one young man had already come and registered this guild name for himself. What crazy person took our name? Tell me the name of the guild master. Yuchun asked, barely restraining herself. It turned out to be a guy under the pseudonym Shen, and our hero waited for a response from the leader of the cave rats. And then needles rained down from the thick of the forest in his direction. Bao had no difficulty in fighting them off. And then something big began to jump from branch to branch along the tree. A lump of something brown was visible among the leaves. Another moment and the lump climbed down from the tree, appearing face to face with the enemy. This is exactly what our hero was waiting for. But still he felt sorry for this hedgehog because he was too cute. But life is a game and the strongest wins, so Bao had to cut him in two so that he would die. But then the game gave him a new task. At first, Bao didn't understand what was happening, but then I remembered the three missions. In the first and second, he needed to take four soldiers to reach level 20 and also clear the Rat Cave dungeon. But nothing was said about the third mission. Now the secret has been revealed. 
it turns out that our hero needs to tame the rat boss by any means possible. While the young man stood in thought, the hedgehog became brave and, releasing needles, ran towards him. Bao did not expect such a setup from the game, but still decided to take on this simple matter. Moreover, his small team did an excellent job. Dozens of dead rats littered the ground. Of course, it took a lot of effort for the guys, and now they were breathing heavily and trying to regain their breath. But then behind them, they heard something like growing thunder, and they seemed to find themselves at the epicenter of an explosion that knocked them off their feet. In fact, it was our hero who began to tame the hedgehog. At first, he decided to try by force. For a few moments, because of such noise, the animal went deaf, and now he stood clutching the ground with his claws. Our hero also decided to take a breath, but still he will be able to solve this problem. It is not difficult to tame such a little thing. Bao put his hand into his pocket and pulled out a small bottle of reddish liquid. After shaking the bottle, he sprinkled the liquid on the hedgehog, and its damage began to decrease significantly. And soon he was as healthy as five minutes ago. Our hero beckoned the hedgehog with his finger. How dare you hit me? That's what you're saying, right? He quipped. His words enraged the animal and he bared his front teeth and rushed towards the young men. But his threatening sniffing did not frighten our hero. And then the hedgehog jumped on him. Bao could have killed him, but he had to tame the monster. And for this, he decided to use a magical click. Even in flight, the animal was surprised when it saw a finger in front of it. And not a weapon. But it was already too late. The crack was so strong that the hedgehog was thrown aside by the shockwave. And Tarzan and Toilette watched with interest what was happening from behind the bushes. The hedgehog turned over several times in the air and fell to the ground. And when he got up, a huge lump began to swell on his head and he began to cry in pain. Must I repeat the above words ten more times? You and I will build an ideal hierarchical relationship, our hero said approaching him. Tarzan and Toilette sighed, why is their mentor so heartless? Meanwhile, in the village of beginners, life continued to boil. A user named Shen was reborn and continued to fight for his place in the sun. Standing in the middle of one of the main squares of the village, he offered everyone that for just one gold piece they would receive help with investments in shares, and also offered a broker for cryptocurrencies. Suddenly a system window opened in front of him. It was Yu Chen who decided to call him and clarify the situation. But the man thought that she was interested in cryptocurrency and needed his help. At first Yu Chen didn't know how to respond to this, but she soon pulled herself together and asked that if she really bought cryptocurrency from him, would the rate begin to grow quickly? Moreover, if she continues to play the role of an aspiring businesswoman, then the guild will easily find this player. Soon the conversation was over. Shen continued to advertise his services in the square, and Yu Chen, not paying attention to the admiring glances of passers-by, hurried towards him. And the people around her admired her appearance because you don't often see such a beauty in a stunning outfit. Yu Chun found the right person right away, and putting on a charming smile, she went up to him and said hello. Shen did not expect to see such a beauty in front of him. Stuttering and looking away, he greeted back, and Yu Chun continued to amaze him with her charm taking the guy by the hand and offering to put things aside and talk one-on-one. -on -one. At the same time, continuing to caress the interlocutor's hand, who barely found the strength to ask what kind of conversation this was. With a wink, Yu Chun replied that it was secret. After which, squeezing his hand, she whispered in his ear that she wanted to buy the guild from him, and she added that he can set any price, she will pay. Shen almost succumbed to her seductive spell, but then it was as if someone had cast a spell on him. He pulled his hand away from the girl, and he said that it would be very difficult. There was a minute of silence. In general, Shen was not against selling the guild, but only after he conquered the Astrum game with his skill. Meanwhile, our hero, dressed in a sports uniform, raised his new ward. Obeying his orders, the hedgehog first leaned forward, then back, then left, then right, and turned his head. When the animal noticeably relaxed, Bao made the training more difficult in an orderly tone, and the hedgehog had no choice but to obey him. Tarzan and Toiletta felt sorry for the animal and silently prayed to God that their mentor would pay attention to them again. Towards the end, the hedgehog began to lose his strength, and he realized that something needed to be changed. Therefore, insert exactly in front of our hero, he saluted him. This was exactly the moment Bao had been waiting for. Now he can finally communicate normally with the hedgehog. But no matter how much he thought, it was still strange why he had to tame the boss of the cave rats. First, it was necessary to establish contact with the animal, and Bao asked him to answer questions with one syllable, kick. After some further thought, our hero took off his cap and put it on his head. Still, he felt sorry for the hedgehog because of the bump. You're pretty cute, now you're with us. Bao said and squatted down and gently stroked his pet. Such caress struck the animal on the spot. And he again saluted his master. Only now in his soul, he also swore to serve him faithfully. After the hedgehog was dealt with, our hero decided to see how much his guys had improved their skills. Both of them were immensely devoted to him, but they still needed to work with their trust points and level to reach the ideal. But on the other hand, the guys have already reached the required mark and Bao has also completed secret mission number three. And something was also bothering him. 
as if he had forgotten to do something. And so, having taken out the letter, I decided to check the task again. The fact that the guild leader, the King of the End, disappeared was extremely sad. But the rest of the guild members needed to continue living to figure out what happened to him. And so now they fought in order to understand the Astrum game system. Three monsters, armed with stone clubs, were advancing on Deccan. But the girl cut them into pieces with one swing of her sword. Some monsters, seeing how their fellow tribesmen were quickly killed, were slightly frightened. If Deccan was good with a sword, then Yu Chun mastered magic. Seeing the girl standing motionless in one place, a mutated wolf ran towards her. Seeing the danger, Charon called out to her friend, and throwing up the sword in her hand, she threw it at the wolf, who with his mouth open already wanted to bite off the girl's head. But Deccan's sword cut his throat in time, and the wolf, sprinkling blood all around, fell to the ground. Fortunately, this misunderstanding did not stop Yu Chun from concentrating. And when she snapped her fingers, a flame ignited in her palms. And she was also incredibly angry. She understood that Shen was a huge fan of their leader. And I admire him. Shen decided to revive the guild, thereby proving to the world that he was worth something. But the fact that Shen so brazenly appropriated their guild to himself annoyed the guildmaster. Now she understood why modern children do not play RPGs. Psychologists advise that if a person is angry, he needs to be somewhere. To break something. Yu Chun listened to this advice but instead burned everything to the ground with her ability. Charon watched her friend with caution and turned to Deccan and told her the news that she had heard that the common playroom had risen to first place. Hearing this, Deccan was not even surprised. While the girls were chatting, Yuchen gradually calmed down. She must remain the guildmaster no matter what. But if they want to join the guild, then they need to unite with others. And our hero took out the letter and reread it again and again. But I didn't find anything new for myself. All this was very strange. He was an NPC and someone else tried to return him to the real world. Moreover, he felt pain. And what kind of rule is this if, if a user is killed, he will be punished in the next role? There were a lot of questions, but not a single answer. The system window brought him back from the world of thoughts to the reality of the game. Sighing sadly, Bao turned it around. But for completing the mission, he will receive additional rewards. All he has to do is collect the items, and these tasks will be completed. But Bao was in no hurry to press the yes button. He tore the letter into several pieces and then crumpled it up. Now everything became clear to him. Bao twisted the paper ball in his hand and threw it away. He snapped his fingers and caused a spark, which burned a paper ball on the fly. Now everything was clear to our hero. For the game to progress, it needs him. Bao didn't hesitate to press the yes button, after which the system window of the game was minimized. It turns out that the artificial intelligence underestimated him. But this is normal since Song Bao is the leader of the King of the End Guild and he is the best in games. The whole world knows about his skill. He also has three loyal soldiers, Gradually the flame in his palm began to fade. There was a click, and the fire went out. Bao was frightened by surprise, but soon the fear was replaced by amazement. During the last days of closed beta testing, he and the guild came across a thorny camel in the desert, and the whole team attacked the monster. The decisive blow, of course, was delivered by Bao, who only now, ten days after the opening of the caviar, Astrum realized that he still had the same skills as in the closed beta. The young man clicked again and fire appeared on his fingers. Bao looked at the flickering flames with admiration. But it was not for long, the fire soon went out. But it turned out he didn't have enough mana. Bao turned away so that his subordinates would not see such a shame. Even the hedgehog pretended not to notice anything. Clearing his throat, our hero suggested that we first return to the village for beginners. All three happily supported his idea. Soon they were already standing in front of the main gate. And now they admired the majesty of the architecture. Having admired enough, they went forward. But then an invisible wall appeared in front of Bao and the hedgehog, preventing them from going further. Toilette and Tarzan did not immediately notice that something was wrong. And our hero, helplessly feeling the invisible wall, continued to remain in place without moving forward. The fact that he could not pass was a significant problem. Tarzan even suggested that maybe Bao had done something bad. Our hero decided to use the entrance to the heavy artillery, and decided that he had the strength to press his face against the invisible wall. True, from the outside it looked very ugly. Maybe this is a closed region? He thought for a moment. But then an amazing idea came into the head of our hero. Seeing his extremely interested look, the hedgehog shrank. Soon, Tarzan and Toilette also understood where everything was going. Having grabbed the hedgehog, Bao asked them to move aside. Meanwhile, tired company employees tried to somehow solve the problems that had arisen. The fact is that they discovered a bug in the game system and were now trying to access it. But if it doesn't work, we decided to use Plan B. It turned out that artificial intelligence blocked the system, but they themselves did not have access to it. But then Director Ko himself decided to come to the developers. He was informed that problems with the tail had arisen again. One of the company's employees confirmed this information and added that it seems they are getting closer to understanding the rules of the game. What rules? He looked at his subordinate incomprehensibly. 
Looks like the main event is blocked, answered the worker. As soon as he said this, he found himself in the game. The young man never thought that moving between the real world and virtual reality was so frightening. He stood in the middle of the road and decided to move forward. Soon, he saw some kind of settlement, and in front of the main gate, there was a huge crowd of people. They all wanted to go through the gate, but the guards did not let them in. Some people from the crowd began to tear out their hair in despair. But this is not surprising. After all, they had various missions and tasks, and now they could not complete them. But the game developer Astrum himself has never heard of such a thing. Making his way through the crowd, he asked the guards what was happening and what they were going to do. To which I received the answer that all of them were blocked from entering the kingdom. That's all. There weren't even any explanations. After thinking a little, the researcher realized that he had to find our hero and ask about the current situation. But if you think about it, then the company made a big mistake when it decided to entrust the development of the game to an artificial intelligence. Only now the man realized what a difficult path he had ahead of him. After all, Songbao could be anywhere and who knows how long it will take to find him. He himself reviewed the latest recording of the game with the chief engineer dozens of times. All guild members behaved as usual. They fought, joked among themselves, and so on. But why exactly did the game not want to give up the leader? Why were all users of the beta version of the game cancelled? But Songbao remained inside the game. Several days have passed. The space in the air sparkled, shimmering with sparkles in the sun. Soon four players appeared at these places. These were the rest of the King of the End Guild. For the first few minutes, they began to examine their skills. As expected, everything was cancelled and now they will have to work everything out again. Of course, during the beta testing, they already had many skills and the realization that they would have to go through everything again disappointed them a little. They were also worried about the fact that they could not contact the guildmaster of the guild, which claimed that it was planning to create a guild here too. Among the four, one guy in iron armor stood out. He was already quite tired of such attire and he took them off, exposing his underwear to everyone. His name was Lou. The young man was in a good mood and offered to make a fuss. His friends did not understand him, and he explained that first they need to return to the cave to catch the lone demon king. But they also need to find a guildmaster. If they were in a good mood, then our hero's tamed hedgehog was not, like Tarzan and Toilette who will have to catch him. Fortunately, they did not have to feel the sharp needles of the animal on themselves. The wall passed the strength test, and the hedgehog was kicked back into Bao's face by the shockwave, who was not very happy to receive acupuncture in the head. But even despite the number of awkward situations that happened with their mentor, Tarzan and Toilette never ceased to admire Bao, who was now sighing heavily and writhing in pain, taking the needles out of his body. But he needed to complete the mission, a mission that our hero himself did not know about. But if he does not complete this mission, he will not be able to advance further. The system explained that in order to continue the mission further, you need to receive a reward. It turns out that everything was much less confusing and complicated than Bao thought, and the only thing he hoped for was that next time the system would do everything right. When our hero pressed the consent button, the invisible wall disappeared. Bao stood up, shook off his clothes, and gave the hedgehog his cap. But the game system threw out another surprise. To promote more evenly, Bao will be given a different role. Namely, he needs to become a mentor for the monster and give a name to the depressed slime. Tarzan and Toilette ran to him, glad that they could be with their mentor again. But the world around our hero began to spin and begin to change. And now the young man stands in the dungeon, and a wooden chest fell in front of him. Bao, of course, understood that this was all a game but the fact that the system did not even ask his permission to move noticeably hurt his pride. In addition, Tarzan and Toilette were upset that their mentor did not even say goodbye before disappearing. First of all, our hero needed to warm up, which is what he was doing now. But the hedgehog was a little scared by the dungeon. Bao, of course, was in a bit of a hurry now. He needed to collect a reward, but he decided to calm the animal down a little by petting it a little. And not far from them, something was hiding in the darkness of the night and now it was moving towards the uninvited guests towards the hearts beating in their bodies. Bao reacted instantly, and his sword did not allow the decaying skeleton to cut them in half. The first attack was unsuccessful, and the monster retreated, but our hero was also a worthy opponent. Without taking his eyes off the skeleton, he snapped his fingers using the guildmaster's special skill, after which he waved his hand and illuminated the dungeon with divine fire. True, he caused the flame not for the sake of light, but in order to destroy the enemy. Now a huge pillar of fire was spinning behind the skeleton, Thanks to the wind and fire, the particles of the skeleton were being eroded from it. This is exactly what our hero was waiting for. Holding his sword tighter, he beheaded the monster. Meanwhile, the rest of the King of the End Guild arrived at the registry and asked whether the name of their guild was registered. Since the guild already existed, they were invited to join it. The guys, of course, agreed. After all, they are the same group that defeated the boss during beta testing and want to join the guild because they want to fight with the leader. They met Song Bao and did not know that Shen had now taken his place who gradually began to develop persecution mania. Over the past few days, it seemed to him more and more often that someone was watching him. 
Even when he was on the square offering help with investing in stocks and assistance with cryptocurrency, he picked up a stone lying nearby on the ground, after which he turned around without taking his eyes off the suspicious bush, and swinging he threw a stone at him. But it was the most ordinary bush in which no one was hiding. Shen rubbed his temples, he seemed to be having a nervous breakdown, but then he received a notification and, sitting comfortably at the roots of the tree, he entered the system. I didn't expect that someone would decide to join his guild, but I still decided to look at the accounts of those interested. In addition, he liked that users wanted to join the guild because they wanted to fight with the leader. That Shen's pride was noticeably stroked, who has only now begun to understand that his dream of becoming powerful and powerful can come true. But for this he needs to show ingenuity and charisma. Inspired, he confirmed the acceptance of new players into the guild. Soon the hedgehog got used to the dungeon and having found a piece of wood began to sharpen his teeth on it. He was not even embarrassed by the skull falling at his feet. And our hero continued to resist the army of skeletons. Such a massacre even gave him pleasure. From under his sword the bones began to crumble. One of them hit the hedgehog hitting the cone painfully, and Bao continued to defeat monsters. So he took a couple of steps back and stepped forward and ran towards them. With one swing of his sword he beheaded several walking skeletons at once. One of the monsters was a shooter and, hiding among the stalagmites, was pulling the bowstring of a crossbow. Taking aim he fired an arrow at our hero. Bao heard a whistle in the air and turned the arrow in the opposite direction. This is how the skeleton shooter died from his own arrow. Finally, the hedgehog realized how brave and strong his owner is. He looked around him and picked up a bone lying nearby. At first, it was difficult for him to hold it in his hands. But then, having gotten used to it and taking an example from our hero, he also began to swing the bone like a sword. Finally, the monsters were finished and he decided to look into the system. Naturally, in order to receive a reward, he was incredibly interested to see what was given to him this time. As always, the chest appeared epically, creating a buzz around itself. He was given two things. A soul collector's earring. This is an artifact that was used by the legendary potions master who wore it all his life. The stone turned red as a result of numerous experiments that the master conducted. It seemed to bow that there was some special secret in this earring. The reward also included a zookeeper's belt. It restored damage, stamina, and mana to all of the user's pets. But certain conditions had to be met for the ability to be unlocked. Watching how the game system gave these items to our hero, he felt like a player. But he needs more information. In any case, if things are like this, then everything will be different. But will he really have to suffer again? After all, his next task was to become a mentor for the monster and give a name to the depressed slime, the young man thought. For some reason, he had a completely bad feeling. The hedgehog wrote down as if agreeing with him. Bao smiled and lightly caressed the animal. Before completing the mission, they need to do a little work. Mentally preparing himself, he stepped forward. But soon I stopped because I didn't know where to look for this depressive slime. The hedgehog squeaked again and began pointing its paw to the side. Our hero obeyed him and soon multicolored slimes were hanging around him throughout the cave. They spread over the stones like snot, wanting to absorb everything around them. Our hero winced. The slimes were significantly different from what he expected to see. But this is even better. He will be able to get rid of them without the slightest feeling of guilt. The young man took out his sword and the hedgehog clung tightly to his clothes. One, two, three and the dismembered slimes no longer moved. But then Bao noticed something strange. He looked closely at the sword. Before his eyes, the iron was corroded. Unlike him, the hedgehog did not yet know about the hidden threat and began to beat the slime with the bone of the defeated skeleton. And soon he also stared in surprise at the smoking bone. Our hero's guesses turned out to be correct. The slimes contained acidic mucus. But our hero was not frightened by any obstacle. This only meant that it would be more fun to destroy opponents. Meanwhile, the researcher was already standing at the entrance to the dungeon. He asked fate over and over again why the lot fell on his soul to find the chief engineer of the game Astrum. While he was thinking, sounds were heard from the depths of the dungeon that frightened the man. He didn't want to go forward. But if he continues to put it off, he may have problems. The dungeon area has not been explored by anyone so far, so no one other than the leader would go there. The developer hoped that there were other people in the cave besides our hero, and also heard that many games give users full uniforms. And opening the equipment window, he dressed himself in armor from head to toe. Taking a deep breath, he took a few steps forward. But then he received a message from Choi Yuchun, the guild master of the King of the End Guild. From the moment the leader disappeared, she wrote to the developers every day and managed to get bored of everyone. Meanwhile, the hedgehog held the bones corroded by the acid. With his touchy behavior, he reminded our hero a little of a raccoon, who decided to wash cotton candy in a puddle. Bao didn't know the name of this monster, which he had never seen before. So he decided to find out everything first. Now that he knows that slugs are acidic, they will definitely be fine. The young man began to calm the animal so that he would stop crying because of such garbage. But since they had already come here, our hero decided to give his ward one cool gift. Hearing about this, the hedgehog instantly began to smile, 
but he was worried about how they would defeat the slimes. However, Bao assured him that they could kill them without touching them. The animal stared in surprise at its owner. Bao touched the ball with his hand and concentrated. Now the weapon resembled a huge burning torch. In fact, this young man used the skill of a fiery aura which he condensed and released his magical firepower. Then he performed his signature swing in the air, and throwing it from hand to hand, he swung it. The blow went through the air, but the young man's aura scattered everywhere and shredded the slimes like invisible threads. Everything happened so quickly that they didn't even have time to hide. Our hero planned to get rid of all the mobs, and then the main slime would come out on its own. But then it turned out that he didn't have enough mana. Bao did not expect such a setup at the most necessary moment. In his stupor, the slime saw an excellent opportunity to attack. Seeing that everything was not turning out for the best for them, the hedgehog wrote down. But for our hero, this was not the end. The sword will certainly suffer, but this was the only chance for the slugs not to touch living bodies. But then the hedgehog began to squeak loudly, attracting attention. When he realized that the owner was looking at him, he began to point one finger and make combat attacks, such as for Bao to leave one slime alive. Our hero did not immediately understand what the animal wanted from him, but soon it dawned on him. Soon only one slime remained alive, but there were also losses on the part of our hero. Iron dripped from the sword in thin streams. He gave the slime 50 seconds to bring in the depressive slime. The jelly-like piece was very much afraid of the armed young man standing opposite him, but instead of going to carry out the order, he only curled up into a ball. What's the problem? Our hero asked him. In response, the slime pointed to the side. Bao realized that the slime wanted them to go together. After several corridors, the slime stopped, not wanting to go further. But this was enough for our hero, so he decided to let the accompanying person go. I am glad that he managed to stay alive. The slug hastened to retreat. But our hero and his pet had to cover their eyes with their hands. The fact is that the closer they approached the goal, the more difficult it was for them to look ahead because of the bright light, which came from a despondent slug, not paying attention to anything. The slime drew a dumbbell and other sports equipment on the ground with a stick. Observing from the side, Bao agreed that the slime really looked depressed. But then something caught the hedgehog's attention. It was a rusty dumbbell on it. Like many things around there was mucus. Only now the slime became interested in the animal. A chain formed in his head. That if he manages to catch a hedgehog and fry it, he can get protein that will help him become strong. Another moment and the slime was behind the hedgehog. Bao only heard the desperate cry of his pet. But by that time the slime had already begun to absorb the animal. His mucus gradually began to envelop him from head to toe. But before our hero could run to the hedgehog's aid, the slime stopped. The stunned animal, not understanding what was happening, stood up and took several hesitant steps. Bao was also shocked. Is the slime really so sad that it doesn't have the strength to dissolve its victim? But first, it was necessary to free the pet and the young man began to beat the slime. The blows made her even more upset. She was so powerless that her acid did not damage the skin of our hero's hands. Realizing his powerlessness, the slime got off the hedgehog. Watching him, Bao realized that weakness and powerlessness made the slime madly angry. Since the hedgehog had no other worries, he went to play with dumbbells, leaving his owner in thought. Our hero picked up the stone with which the slime had recently been playing. The stone was heavier than it looked. This is certainly strange, but should it transform a slime obsessed with the exercise machine? Still, it's probably difficult to live a dream for decades and realize that it won't come true. Meanwhile, members of the King of the End Guild gathered for a meeting. Choi Yuchun, Seo Charin, Dean were joined by Rank 5 Flicker and Taekwon. Yu Chun began the meeting by saying that she was unable to contact the leader after the closed beta testing ended, and she assumed that something must have happened to him while he was in the game. Charon agreed with her. Deccan added that this was probably the tricks of the Astrum game. And then Yu Chun stood up abruptly. Now there were a lot of problems, but the fact that someone else was using Captain Reed's nickname made her incredibly angry, because there were many other nicknames available now. Her friends tried to calm her down. And Taekwon changed the topic by asking if the guildmaster managed to establish contact with him outside the game. Yuchun said that for now, his employee is doing this. Since there were no other options, the guild needed to continue looking for clues. Taekwon asked if the rest of the guild members had appeared online. It turned out that everyone except one is logging into the game. And since the name of the guild has changed, problems and confusion have been arising all the time. But Deccan and Charon decided to help them adapt to the changes. As a guildmaster, Yuchun advised Taekwon to focus on leveling up now. The brother in the game understood her without further ado. Finally, Yuchun asked Flicker when the low season would start again. At first, the guy smiled sarcastically in response. Since Yuchun said low season in Korean, Flicker corrected her by repeating her in Konglish English with a Korean accent. But the fact is that he had very high self-esteem. Meanwhile, the slime continued to mentally scold himself about how powerless and weak he was. At some point, his whining began to irritate even the hedgehog and he began to twist his face like a monkey. Then our hero decided to force him to train and first of all ordered him to pump up his abs. According to our hero's calculations, 
Restoring the slime should have taken 45 minutes, but this did not happen. But with the jelly-like mascara, nothing changed at all. Bao thought that if he forced him to train, he would change or something. But it turned out that it was not so simple. This reminded the young man of the time when the problem of an aggressive cave was solved in a non-normal way. And then a guest came to our hero. Think for yourself. It is impossible for the slime to be obsessed with the simulator. The slug knows the answer anyway. Hey, come here for a second, Bao said turning to the slime. When he realized what they wanted from him, the slime began to cry tearfully, beat himself in the stomach with his hands and tell something while gesticulating. Our hero and the hedgehog watched him closely. Bao tried his best to understand what the slime was saying, but he couldn't figure out anything. Sighing heavily, he remarked out loud that it would be great if someone translated this whole dilemma for him. The hedgehog heard him and happily decided to help him. While our hero was straining his brains, trying to understand what the slug wanted to tell him with the help of hints. And he bitterly regretted why there was no Igor nearby who could help. No swordsman who would be good listeners. In addition, there was no information about the task and no explanations. Although he needs to use everything he currently has. And at this time, the hedgehog tried his best to attract the owner's attention. But he soon stopped, realizing that Bao was too immersed in his thoughts to be distracted. Soon, figuratively speaking, an apple fell on our hero's head. Having met the pet's gaze, he realized that the hedgehog had wanted to tell him this for a long time. Namely, if Bao does not find a solution, this does not mean that he will lose. After listening to him, the animal rolled its eyes tiredly. After all, he's been talking about this for the last 10 minutes. A few minutes passed and our hero's arsenal of rewards increased. Using a special fire skill, he finished off the remaining slimes. When they burned, a small wet puddle and crystals remained in their place. It was them that the young man was hunting now. The slugs that come out are actually quite useful. But the depressed slime was still in a sad state. And then the hedgehog realized what needed to be done. He hastened to tell Bao about this. All you had to do was make an acid-resistant dumbbell. Only now our hero realized how smart his pet is. But then the mucus began to try to attract the young man's attention. Of course, Bao noticed this and assured that he would finish soon. To watch the dumbbell he needed metal and slug acid. He already had these two ingredients. The depressed slug and the hedgehog moved away and began to watch what was happening with interest. When the crystal was paid, our hero placed it in the axe. The ingredients were mixed together for a couple of minutes. Then Bao snapped his fingers again, and a ball of the purest water appeared in his palm, shimmering. The slime had no eyes, but it seemed to our hero as if he saw a reflection of hope in them. Therefore, I tried to make every effort to help the slug. He dipped the molten axe into cold water, tempering the iron. And at this moment, the slime was disappointed. He was sure that today everything would remain the same, but he was wrong. Soon a special weapon and axe, which can also be used as dumbbells, was ready. For the first time in many years, the slug felt happy. Handing him an axe, our hero invited him to pump himself up. Slime immediately reached out to take his salvation from depression. How long he had been waiting for this moment. Due to the ability of acid to corrode everything with just its touch, the slime began to feel sad because it could not press weights. Our hero watched with emotion as the slime trained. For him, he was now literally a benefactor. The hedgehog also did not lag behind and encouraged the slime with compliments. And there was something to praise for. From a jelly-like piece, the slime turned into a mountain of muscles. His happiness literally knew no bounds, and therefore he decided to swear allegiance to our hero for the rest of his life. Meanwhile, the researcher still has not read the message from Yu Chun. However, he could not ignore the girl. Yu Chun was wondering why contact with Captain Reed has not yet been established. Was the video from the day of training when Bao did push-ups really fake? The researcher responded by recommending that she check Song Bao's health status from time to time by opening the attached attachments if she is so worried about him. Having answered the message, the man stepped into the dungeon. At every step, he looked around, trying to identify a possible hidden danger. Soon, he came across broken stalagmites and pieces of stones. In this part of the game, there were no problems with the restoration of the monster. But for some reason, it was not possible to restore the images of the battle. The company was already checking the game for safety day and night, but still they found a problem in the game system. The feedback from artificial intelligence was very strange, and the developers were sure that there was some kind of error. When he went forward, the walls of the cave were scratched by something sharp, most likely a sword. The man was scared to imagine what kind of massacre was taking place here. But then, just like with our hero, an invisible wall appeared in front of him at the entrance to the village, preventing him from passing further. It turned out that the server was currently being updated, and therefore access to the dungeon was prohibited. After the slime swore allegiance to Bao, he continued to demonstrate his strength skills, which did not really surprise the young man. The remaining four members of the King of the End Guild gathered at the appointed place in front of the fountain in the village square to meet with the leader of the guild. Meanwhile, the slime easily became sad, his talent lay in his strength, but then someone chopped him into dozens of pieces in an instant. Everything was so sudden that none of the trio had time to react. 
and the four guild members had to wait a long time for the leader, although they arrived at the exact coordinates to the meeting place. Finally, the man they were waiting for came. He was, of course, Shen, who was incredibly happy about this power. They were expecting to see our hero. Shen was not embarrassed that he was not greeted in return, and he decided to teach the guys some manners, saying that when they see their leader, they should greet him. But Lu didn't like the leader right away. He grabbed the guy tightly by the clothes and pulled him towards him. Did you really want to die? He hissed in Shen's face. Meanwhile, pieces of Slime's body scattered on the ground. Soon, huge claws reached out from the darkness towards them, and after him the body of the monster itself. Looking at him, our hero couldn't even understand how many animals and insects were combined in one monster, which was now approaching him threateningly. But the monster's teeth were not destined to sink into the young man's body. The slime's hand squeezed his throat, not allowing him to breathe, after which he hit the ground with all his might. The slime regenerated thanks to the core hidden in its body, and it will regenerate until the core is pierced. But the monster quickly came to its senses, and was now desperately trying to escape from the slime's double-sided axe, who could never allow anyone to touch his master. And even the terrifying face of the monster did not frighten him. However, Bao shouted at him not to take his eyes off the mantis's claw, because the monster dismembered the slugs over and over again. When he was once again completely dismembered, the mantis found other slimes, who also didn't really want to die. Realizing that his help was needed more than ever before, the slime, gritting his teeth, regenerated again. And holding the axe tightly, he went into battle again. Our hero and his pet were watching them from the side, but then suddenly a description of the praying mantis appeared. It said that he had lost his friends, and the slime was just now spinning his axe to throw it at him. After which both rushed at each other. The slime would have cut the praying mantis, but the insect managed to extend its claw, which was located exactly opposite the core. Seeing where things were going, the slime tried to evade. Our hero understood that he was in danger, but decided to watch the battle of the monsters a little more. The claw pierced the skin of the slime. Her thin blade was already touching the core, causing great pain to the slime. Finally, he made up his mind, grabbed the praying mantis by the neck and pushed it away from him. The monster hissed threateningly. It's not surprising since he almost defeated his opponent. Slime strained himself, and concentrating all his strength into a fist, he hit the praying mantis on the ground several times, and he hit the insect with his fist several more times, weighing it down after which he threw the dead mantis into the gorge. Our hero was very happy about the slime's victory. The hedgehog was no less happy, and the slime, slightly embarrassed, accepted congratulations. Soon all four guys were defeated. Despite the fact that Shen was also beaten and was now covered in bruises, he still emerged victorious in the fight against the four. His conceit and superiority reminded Lu very much of one person, namely Song Bao, the leader of the King of the End Guild. Both men had a similar fighting style, and so did their manner of expression. There was nothing to do and Lu invited his friends to obey Shen until they meet the real master of the guild. Although Shen annoyed the other guys, they agreed. When the minute for negotiations between the four had passed, Shang approached them. So you guys decided to be my comrades, right? He asked, extending his hand to them. And our hero decided to take a closer look at the praying mantis. And with him the hedgehog saw precious stones, cores, in the dead body. Seeing his delight, Bao suggested to him if he wanted to come and eat all the stones. The animal was surprised at such immeasurable generosity, and he grabbed the kernels and began to eat them one after another, enjoying the divine taste. Meanwhile, mucus began to flow out of the praying mantis's stomach. When it completely flowed out, it became a new slime. And then she started hunting for the hedgehog. Suddenly, the animal felt bad as if he had choked and was now coughing. At that very moment, the mucus decided to devour him. But the unexpected happened. Sparks fell from the animal's throat. Another second, and he burned the mucus with a fiery belch. At first, the animal could not believe that it had such an ability, and Yuchen sat in front of the computer for hours at home. She was looking at the discussed topics on gaming forums. After all this time, the guild leader, the King of the End, has not left the headlines. Everyone was interested in whether it was true that Captain Reed had gone missing. There were many haters who were happy that the leader was no longer in touch. They believed that the leader was trying to attract attention by being annoying on YouTube and speedrunning in Astrum. And so Yuchen spent hours reading conversations and comments. In the end, she couldn't stand it and freaked out, tearing off her headphones and going into the bedroom. An hour later, she calmed down and continued reading again. One comment interested her, and she decided to find out his nickname and view his account. A message was written on his page. It said that the user hoped that the leader of the guild leader, the King of the End, was doing well. However, he decided to take the guild name for himself in order to bring back Captain Raid. But this did not happen. Therefore, he decided to keep an eye on the guild until Captain Reed returned. By the name of the nickname, the girl realized that it was Shen. She hovered for several minutes, digesting the information. And then, getting angry with renewed vigor, she began to destroy everything around her. Our hero really didn't mind having such a strong soldier on his team. Besides, the hedgehog seems to like him, which means that they will be friends. 
The slime was indeed huge, about three times taller than an ordinary person. But when the danger passed, he began to become smaller and smaller before our eyes. The fact that he could not be so huge pleased Bao, because this way he would not stand out much from the crowd. But the hedgehog was very surprised by this transformation. For killing a praying mantis, our hero was given a reward, a bag of gold, and also the praying mantis knife. The young man didn't think that everything would be resolved this way. While he was reviewing the desired locations in the user window, his subordinates were enjoying their abilities. The hedgehog was spewing flames, and the slime was training. Finally, Bao decided how they should proceed. His subordinates immediately prepared to listen to him. In fact, they all had only two options, to be attacked or to attack first. But in order to achieve what you want and your goals, you need to maintain order. At first, our hero wanted to give the hedgehog a name. In such a short time, the animal had already become attached to its owner, but did not expect that now it would have a name. Bao thought for a couple of minutes. What name should he come up with for his pet? From time to time, the hedgehog squeaked. Kwong. A brilliant idea occurred to the young man. Why shouldn't he name his pet Kwong? Something, but the animal was expecting a different name. But I was happy about this too. But Bao had no time to pay attention to his reaction because he wanted to finish the mission quickly. Now I needed to give the slime a name. He asked him to stop pressing the weight and beckoned him with his finger. Since the slime was obsessed with training in the gym, our hero decided to call him Kachko Slim. Such a name was perfectly suited to a jelly pile of muscles. And the slime itself was happy too. Now the mission to mentor the depressed slime, turn him into a super monster and give him a name has been completed. But the game added an additional mission to our hero that he could not refuse. It consisted in Bao making sure that Kachka Slime defeated the dungeon boss. At the moment, there was no one stronger than Bao, and therefore Kachka Slime wanted to become as strong as him. The young man reread the mission again. Training the strongest dungeon slime is not that easy. But be it the boss or someone else, our hero and his team will eliminate and kill them all. Poriska found a couple more precious stones in the Kwong district and decided to feast on them. But as soon as he took a bite, he had to jump away from the iron mace raised above him. When the dust settled among the fragments of stones, the silhouette of a war was visible. Once in the past, he was a soldier, but now he was a monster armed with a skeleton. Having encountered it, our hero had the feeling that this mob was stronger than the previous ones, but now he cannot let his guard down, because his opponent was several times larger than himself. When the skeleton swung, Bao took out his sword, and with a sliding movement in which unbridled power was hidden, he repelled the attack of the mace and with the second blow he cut the monster into pieces, and all because he didn't want to waste potions of strength. And when he defeated the monster, he realized that during the fight he would look very sexy and beautiful. But Kachka Slayman brought him back from his thoughts to the real world, who pumped his muscles with a happy smile on his face. His love for sports slightly irritated Bao. But what can you do? Then the young man decided to cut off Kachka Slayman, asking him to try to open the user and status window. Imagine our hero's surprise when Kachka Slayman succeeded, and when he read the characteristics of his subordinate, his amazement knew no bounds. On the scale, Kachka Slime had the strength of level 420th. But Bao only recently started training him and did not expect Kachka Slime to train so quickly. Meanwhile, close friends were walking around the shopping center. What Sharon did was buy new clothes, and Deccan kept her company. When they were going down the stairs, she asked her friend if she thought Yu Chun had been acting strange lately. It turned out that Sharon noticed this too. And also that when they entered the game, Astrum was a little confused, as if she was preparing for something. But she did not convey any meaning to this, because their mutual friend was a perfectionist. But for Deccan, this was precisely what was strange. The fact that the guild suddenly moved to Astrum right before a large-scale raid already raised doubts. Charon thought for a moment. She remembered that the leader before the major raid asked them not to be late. Row Online, Astrum and IG Soft, Guildmaster and Choi Yuchun. I think something is happening, Deccan said thoughtfully. Then a notification from the game Astrum arrived on Charon's phone. It turns out that an urgent collection was announced. In the general chat it was written that they should prepare for the guild quest, which will begin in 20 minutes. Software developers also learned about the guild quest. They never thought that even after the opening of the game, the King of the End would still talk about the guild. And in honor of this, they decided to throw a party and go out to dinner as a team. But the main developer was not yet having fun. More than a million users joined the guild quest. Aren't we excellent at using other people's labor? Thought the developer. The Astrum game is still afloat and remained popular thanks to the well-known Captain Reed. The developer simply has to tell the boss about this. Meanwhile, Cho Yongbi, the name of the developer who followed on the heels of our hero, continued to explore the dungeon after updating the game system. The skeleton defeated by the monster was level 48, and the acid slimes were level 55. Until yesterday, the average level among users was 19, and the highest was 38. These numbers shocked the man. Now he couldn't call our hero anything other than a crazy player, and he was also wondering what our hero's task was again. All these remnants of monsters surrounding the man were cleared away by Bao. 
and when Enby was warily peering into the darkness of the night, an alert sound sounded. The man was startled by surprise. His work colleague congratulated him on the fact that the game reached 1 million downloads. In honor of this, the company planned to have a Korean beef dinner today, and Yongbi was also invited, and since the guild quest began, the company boss wants him to participate. After reading the message, Enby expressed the hope that this was a joke. He knew that people nowadays like to prank their colleagues. The man sat comfortably and opened the custom window. But it turned out that my colleagues were right. Today there was a martial arts competition in which all qualified players could take part. It was a large-scale quest where anyone could receive a calling from the kingdom. Enby was an ordinary average man and did not have any martial arts skills, and that was what competitions were for. This guy Captain Reed is pretty tough. I hope everything will be okay with him, the man said out loud, pondering the situation. And then from the darkness behind him, a voice was heard that asked who he was. Trying not to make sudden movements, the man turned around. Two blue eyes looked at him from the darkness. They seemed to incinerate him with their depth. Soon the voice again asked why Enby was looking for Captain Reed. Meanwhile, our hero and his team came to the entrance to the dungeon boss's lair. So that Kwong would not get in the way, Bao asked him to stay outside. And if he was bored, play with a child's knife. And he sent Kachko's Lime himself to hunt. Having distributed the rolls, our hero went forward. He decided to use an ice aura as a weapon. Thanks to this, he created a clawed paw on his hand from ice. Having crossed the threshold, he got ready. He jumped up and doused the surrounding area around him with an icy whirlwind. The walls of the cave were covered with fine frost, but for some reason there was no answer for our hero. There was still dead silence, and the young man could only hear the beating of his heart. He began to look around in bewilderment. What a disappointment. They probably took the wrong path, and now he will have to go back. But then, small pebbles began to fall from the ceiling, as if a minor earthquake was happening. Bao instantly moved from place to place, assessing the situation. However, so far he could not understand what was happening, but soon the enemy showed himself. Breaking through the stones, a huge worm howled upward. Our hero didn't think that after slime he would have to fight worms. Still, this dungeon is disgusting with its monsters. But Song Bao was famous all over the world for his gaming skills, and therefore could not retreat from such a petty danger. By doing a somersault in the air, he distracted the worm's attention and cut off its tail. Instead of blood, the monster had greenish mucus that emitted a foul odor, but the worm immediately regenerated. This meant that the monster had to be cut in the middle, but such a blow required extreme skill. Gripping his sword tighter, our hero swung. Cutting through the air, the blade approached its target. Having gained speed, Bao quickly and confidently handled the weapon, causing a blast wave. Ice and cold increased the effectiveness of the blow with which the young man killed the worm. But then something behind Bao's back alerted him. Some strange sounds and quiet rustling were heard from there. He immediately realized that danger was lurking there and held out his sword to meet it. This monster was much more powerful than the worm and even our hero will have to work hard to defeat him. Teeth, huge, rough, sharply sharpened teeth were the first thing that appeared from the ruins of the cave. They belonged to the owner of the dungeon, a giant lizard. Seeing him, Kwong and Kachkoslime froze in place. After squinting several times, the lizard finally opened his eyes. His cold, merciless gaze pierced the hedgehog to the bones with fear. But the worst thing is that the animal did not see its owner and assumed that the monster had eaten it. This thought filled Kwong with horror. And then Kachkoslima felt the warmth growing to his left. Another second and sparks flew from somewhere below. Hatred and anger awakened in Kwong his ability to fire. Now he was a huge ball of flame. Kachkoslim did not expect such a transformation from his friend. And Kwong snorting angrily rose to his hind legs. After which he spewed a fireball at the killer of his master. Choking from the smoke, the lizard opened its mouth and the fire got right inside it, causing the monster to explode. The first wave of emotions passed and Kwong gradually began to calm down. He hurried to his master on time. Thanks to the fire attack, Bao managed to escape from the monster's belly. But the wards learned about his salvation only when they heard the loud clang of iron on stone. This is our hero who appeared epically after his death. Kuang's joy knew no end. Tears of happiness flowed from his eyes. Bao only now realized how much he loved Kuang and so that the animal would not worry. He wiped the blood from his face, which belonged to the lizard. The hedgehog did not waste time and hurried to the young men. And Bao in response opened his arms to him and they both clung to each other. But our hero immediately let go of the pet. Kwong had not yet extinguished his inner fire and the young man's hands could not stand such a high temperature. Despite this, Kachkoslime watched this picture with emotion. But the battle with the owner of the dungeon was over, and now two blue eyes looked at the scientific researcher from the darkness. From the size of these eyes, the man realized that with his fighting skills he would not be able to resist such a large monster. Although in fact it was our hero with his small team. Only when Bao came closer did he realize that in front of him was an ordinary player, which was a gaming scientific researcher's. Realizing this, our hero immediately realized there was some kind of problem outside in the real world. 
since such people are not simply thrown into the game. When Enby did not answer his question about what was happening outside, Bao could not stand it and grabbed him by the scruff of the neck, forcing him to answer. But Enby still did not believe that in front of him was really the leader of the guild, the King of the End, the same legendary Captain Raid. Our hero swore. He understood that there was too little time and wanted to extract as much information as possible from the scientific researcher. Follow me, he said, and without letting go of the man led him along. Well then the worst happened. Since Bao completed the mission, he was given a new task and role. As if with a snap of his fingers, Kuang blurs into micropixels. Following him is our hero with Kachko Slime. Finally Bao managed to shout to Enby that they should meet outside. But then, the game system sent a notification to the scientific researcher saying that it was rebooting the dungeon due to a system error. Only now did he realize that he had actually met Captain Reed. Since the end of the beta, not a single problem has been recorded in the Astrum game program. And therefore, there was only one way to find the leader of the King of the End Guild. However, Enby's problems were not over yet, because Kachko Slam remained in the dungeon. At first, the Jelly Mountain of Muscles didn't know what to do. Well, remembering how our hero treated the man, he unceremoniously grabbed the axe. Unfortunately, Enby did not have time to react and the blade cut his body in half. Meanwhile, our hero, kicking all the oncoming stones on the road, cursed everyone in the world, especially the game Astrum. Every time he came close to solving the problem, the game seemed to mock him. Following the owner, Kuang was surprised at the number of new words he had learned over the past half hour. Soon, as an apology, the game offered our hero a reward. But the young man, in a fit of anger, kicked the chest, and then a user window opened in front of him. His existence also irritated Bao immensely. But what angered him even more was that he couldn't even break that window and his hand was beating the air. At this rate, he will soon go crazy. Gradually allowing the rage to come out, our hero began to calm down. Be that as it may, he was still in the game, and he needed to move on in order to survive and continue to live a calm, normal life in the real world. Soon the system created new conditions for him for the next task. He needed to undergo special training to gain the skills to control the army. This was a bonus for high-ranking NPCs. Bao thought about it. It's not that there were no results. Judging by the fact that the researcher is immersed in the game, there are no problems with our hero's body in reality. He was sure that the researcher had come to understand what was happening. Apparently Bao is kept out of the game for a specific reason. Although the young man did not know why, he was sure that the Astrum game needed him. The developers mentioned that Astrum is a game in which artificial intelligence bases the gameplay on the data received. Then it turns out that they are going to remember the missing data for them. The young man remembered his missions and assignments. They were all different from regular quests. Only now our hero realized that these are not tasks, but missions. If the point is that Bao can't directly influence the game, then it makes sense. In addition, anyone can receive tasks, but only he is given missions. And then he understood everything. The Astra game is not finished yet. The end of the game will be the moment of completion of Astrum. Gradually, from the direction of the valley, the tramp of approaching horses began to be heard. Another couple of minutes and three horsemen appeared. Having stopped not far from our hero, they got off their horses. At first, Bao thought that this was again some new plot twist. We are glad to welcome you, Captain Reed, was heard under the iron masks. It turned out that Tarzan and Toilette had finally found their mentor. At first, Bao was confused. In addition, the guys brought with them another person whom he did not know. It turned out it was another soldier added for the mission. Under the layers of clothing and wide hat, it was difficult to determine who this person was. The new team member introduced himself. His name was Yuki, and he had recently been assigned to a border protection mission, and therefore asked to be taken care of. This information was too little for our hero, so the system came to his aid by telling him about a new mission. He needed to protect the borders of the Kingdom of Arthur, and there were four missions. First, he needed to achieve the closest seduction with his subordinates, then protect the borders during the guild's quest, also restore the walls, and the fourth mission was hidden. Our hero swore again. Usually he came to play after a hard day at work, but now it turns out that even in the game he is up to his neck with work. But there was nothing to do. First Bao warmed up. And then he decided to see how his new subordinate could be useful. Yuki was a level 30th magician. In principle, these indicators were not so bad, however, the swordsmen were the same until they came to Bao. Following Yuki, our hero tested their skills. In fact, the guys thought that they had not achieved much during the absence of their mentor, but Bao was pleasantly surprised by their achievements. It was at this moment that Kachka Slam killed Enbi. Before his game death, the man only thanked God that he was not dying in the real world. Otherwise, he would have had to experience all the delights of the death agony. But then a stone appeared out of thin air near Kachko Slime, and Bao's voice was heard from it. He asked him not to play for now, and not to increase levels until he calls him back, and also to take care of the rune stone. Kachko Slime did not immediately understand what they wanted from him. 
but the connection was broken and the rune stone fell to the ground. The monster knew that its mucus was corroding iron, and therefore, with fear, it reached out to the stone. Fortunately, he was under a spell, so nothing happened to the stone. This brought great relief to Kachkaslam, and he carefully put a stone in his chest, like in a pocket. But then his attention was attracted by the objects left by Cho Yongbi, namely the little book that fell out of his pocket. This was a game bug report, and our hero was still looking at the rune stone with interest. In fact, it was the same stone that was duplicated and transferred to the target specified by the player by the caster. Can summon a target holding a cloned rune stone in the desired location, and can also be used as a walkie-talkie at any time, such as a telephone. Such great functionality pleased Bao and made a note that he needed to make the same stones for the swordsman and Kuang. And the intrigued one continued to look at the awards. In addition to the surge, he was given a soul collector's necklace. Since there is an earring, the young man suggested that there must be a set. Without hesitation for a long time, he put the necklace on himself. At the same time, experiencing pleasure from awards that matched his external image. Why be surprised? He was a gaming maniac who goes crazy with objects. But Kuang could not understand his master, who five minutes ago refused to open the chest and cursed everyone in the world. Bao decided to check the earrings. Now he was almost level 2 out of 10. It turns out he caught about 2,000 units in Kachkoslam's lair. But then Tarzan interrupted his thoughts. He handed him a leather cloak, specifying that from now on he must wear it. Toilette offered the same cloak, only several times smaller, to Kuang, who was delighted with such an act. But our hero did not understand why he should wear a cloak. Tarzan explained that from now on he needed to hide his identity. Do I need to hide myself? Bao was perplexed again. It turned out that yes, since this was the king's decree. And as confirmation, Tarzan held out a paper scroll. It also turned out that he did not receive it directly. However, the royal seal was real. Perhaps his majesty must have learned about our hero's abilities. To the beat of the drum, Bao broke his signet and began to read the letter out loud. He, Captain Raid, and the commander of the Polar Bear Knights were expected in the border village, so they asked him to come see them as soon as possible before the mission began. But our hero read the last sentence to himself. The king wrote that he knew his secret. There was nothing to do and Bao hit the road. On the way they met many monsters, and now mutated bears with fangs and horns stood in front of them. Even Yuki has never seen such monsters. Then Bao suggested that they were probably attracted to this place by a crack in the wall. But the monsters were not interested in their assumptions and conversations. One of them was rapidly approaching them, but his attack was stopped by Yuki with his magical abilities. His magic materialized and began to tighten like a noose around the monster's neck. In fact, Yuki was a rather attractive light brown guy with big eyes, but now he was calmly talking about the appearance of monsters. After studying the monsters on the border, he could say that he had never encountered such forces before. Perhaps this has something to do with black magic, which means that it was the guys who made a crack in the border. Despite the fact that Yuki's magic constrained the monster's movements, he still tried to break free. He spewed poison that absorbed the guy's magic, but still it was difficult to resist him. And now our hero, putting his sword forward, rushed towards him, picking up speed. After which he plunged the sword up to the hilt into the monster's body. Song Bao sighed. The complexity of the mission is gaining momentum just when he wanted to relax. And the other four remaining from the guild discussed the correct choice of joining Shen's team. Lu decided to raise morale and assured that no one should worry and that everything would go well. But everyone took his words with hostility when Shen ran out of the forest towards them, trying to prevent the rats from catching up with him. Lu tiredly scratched his temples, and he commanded that first they need to catch three aggro mobs that attack the player when he enters the attack radius. Jack was the first to follow his decree. Therefore, he was the first one of the four rats to notice, mistaking him for bait. But this is exactly what Jack needed. When the rat attacked him, he threw it aside with all his might. But he didn't think that when a rat attacked him, its blow would be so strong. Anna also did not expect that the level of rats would be higher than it seemed, so Lu recommended that she aim her crossbow at one beast at a time, and Shen, hiding his eyes, decided to hide and wait for the others to deal with the enemy. But this was his approach plan. When three mice rushed after him, he suddenly braked. And now, having deceived the mice, he wanted to kill them, using a basic sword skill called Slash. The jumping technique involved using one's own weight when attacking. The greater the player's weight, the greater the damage. Thus, with one blow, he killed two rats at once. But he planned to destroy the third with the help of a powerful click. From such a blow, the rat's eyes darkened and a concussion occurred. Shen finished off the paralyzed body with a sword. And then, proudly straightening his back and shoulders, he realized how cool he really was. Meanwhile, our hero and his team have completed their preparations. With the help of Yaka, who opened the portal, they moved to a foreign village. And now we stood in front of a huge wall several meters thick, behind which a quiet, calm life was in full swing. At the sight of such a huge fortress, Bao was surprised. Although, since there is a border here, 
There is no choice, and therefore we have to build such high walls. The swordsmen approached and felt the stones, which were large and heavy. They also noted out loud that the walls are so heavy that they are ideal for strength training, and the workers who built the walls probably had biceps as thick as their thighs. Exactly. You know that you came here to do the same thing, our hero said turning to the guys and winking conspiratorially. At his words, the swordsmen froze in place. Even Kuang became quiet. And all because Bao gave the swordsmen a task. They had to hire workers to repair the walls because these cracks on the walls are very disturbing to the villagers. Watching the reaction of his charges, our hero laughed. He was just joking. He just needed to hire workers. The guys promised that they would complete the task and asked where Bao was going to go. Our hero understood that such huge dents and cracks do not appear just like that. That's why he wanted to walk past the walls with Yuki now. The guy obeyed his order. They walked for a long time, inspecting the walls. Since affinity with swordsmen has become high, our hero should focus on Yuki. Therefore, I decided to break the silence by asking if he had ever been to a border village. Yuki shook his head and replied that no, since this was his first time. But Bao didn't think so, as he carefully watched the guy's reaction. When he saw the wall and he was not surprised, he decided that he had seen it before. After his words, Yuki still remembered that when he studied at the School of Magic, students and teachers often used magic balls to look at the border. Then Bao asked how long he had studied there. It turned out that Yuki studied at the magic school for 10 years and only now left school for the first time. While he was saying all this, our hero approached him and, taking his hat by the brim, lifted it. When the sunlight fell on Yuki's face, in front of him was not a guy at all, but a young light brown girl. From the very beginning, Bao had the feeling that something was wrong with Yuki. Now everything became clear to him. Who are you? He asked. But the girl did not want to answer his question and grabbed her hat and put it on herself. But our hero knew that a person who was released for the first time in 10 years could not be so calm. And so he gave Yuki a chance to confess who she is. The girl realized that there was no turning back. With a deft movement, she opened the clasp and the cloak fell at her feet. On her chest, just above her right forearm, was the Order of the Polar Bear Knights. Yuki pulled back her hair so that our hero could get a better look at the Order. And she warned him that he did not need to be so suspicious because she wanted to ask Captain Reed for cooperation. She is a polar bear knight and is part of a secret search party. She was tasked with finding the traitor, so she joined Captain Reed's group and now asks Bao for help. When she extended her hand to him, the game system created a new quest related to the mission. It was necessary to find a traitor hiding in a border village. Among the polar bear knights there is a traitor who discovered a strange tiger while investigating cracks in the walls. Suspecting that rebel forces are organized in the kingdom, our hero needed to find the traitor by collaborating with a secret search team. But if he refuses, he will become an enemy for the magician. Therefore, putting a smile on his face, he happily agreed to the girl's proposal. And his decision melted the sorceress's heart because the intimacy increased by 50%, and current friendship was 45%, and she already seemed familiar to him. After a showdown, they again began to inspect the walls. Our hero asked if there were any clues about the traitor. Yuki, after examining the cracks, could confidently say that she had never seen such a skill before. The girl wanted to say something else, but the guys felt danger behind them. They barely had time to jump to the side when something gigantic landed very close to them. These were the same mutant bear monsters. Yuki has never seen such monsters. This means that they were attracted to the border village by cracks in the wall. But maybe something else? For example, Bao who is so taken over by monsters. But possessing magic, Yui still managed to resist. One way or another she pursued her goals and wanted to achieve them no matter what. However, what was happening alarmed her. It's not every day that you meet such monsters. Who so wanted to grab them with their powerful paws and crush them. Fortunately, their dark magic was swallowed by protective spells, and also hid them from the eyes of enemies behind a protective dome. Thanks to this, Bao was able to get closer to the monster, and he stuck the sword into him up to the hilt. The complexity of the mission gained momentum every time he wanted to relax. Suddenly, Kuang realized that now his help would be most welcome. Before the astonished eyes of Yuki, he began to transform, gradually lighting up with fire. Our hero also snapped his fingers, creating a spark. They needed to put in as much effort as possible to win. For this, he and the Hedgehog, with their powers and abilities, merged into one single whole. And Yuki, being in a shocked state, continued to watch them. Meanwhile, our hero began to create a fiery core. Its power of action was supposed to be increased by Kuang with his fiery breath. And so it happened. The ignited core flew like a bullet towards its target. As soon as the fire came into contact with the monster's fur, it immediately ignited, causing enormous pain and unbearable heat. Moreover, the fire made its way into the monster's body, filling it with smoke from the inside and the bear inflated like a ball, after which it exploded, scattering sparks around itself. Everything that was happening seemed like a dream to Yuki. She thought that usually opponents fight with swords, staves, and bladed weapons, 
It was with his help that Shen, now disappointed, was cutting crosses on trees. He didn't understand why it was so difficult to find the rat's den cave. Lu tore him out of his thoughts by informing him that there were very few trees left, so they should finish everything quickly. Shen agreed with him and suggested attacking the tree behind him which he pointed to. The shot from the drawn bowstring flew with a whistle and landed at the intended target. Thanks to this shaking of the wood and noise, the rats came to protect themselves. The team was already preparing to shoot arrows at it and attack with magic, but Shen decided to take care of the animal himself. And grabbing the sword from its sheath, he hurried to raise his level. But before that, he first clenched his fingers holding the sword's handle. After which, smiling, he made his signature swing. Ostensibly showing by this that it is clearly an honor for the enemy to meet him and fall by his hand, but he shouldn't have praised himself so much and acted so ostentatiously. Having put out its horn, the rat ran towards him, and from a running start he stuck it into Shen. If you think about it, then compared to this beast, Kuang is still an angel. Because from just one blow, Shen's mouth and nose began to bleed, and he spent the last minutes of his gaming life in painful agony. And the rat, with its terrifying appearance, showed everyone that it was a winner. And hissing menacingly, she headed towards the rest of the guild members but they too did not escape the fate of the leader. Usually a sword stuck into the ground meant that its former owner rested here in peace. Our hero came across just a few of these, but then Yuki called out to him. Bao turned to the call, and his body was filled with painfully familiar feelings. He only felt this way when Yuchun rushed to his aid, but unfortunately it was Yuki. As soon as she waved her hands, a magical storm rose in front of her. Her movements evoked nostalgia for our hero. After all, this is exactly how Yuchun moved, only she commanded fire. These visions momentarily clouded Bao's mind. But he still did not forget that he was now face to face with danger. And while Yuki was holding back the monster, he was cutting it open. However, where does he get the feeling that he is playing with Yuchun? Besides, that girl standing behind him looks like a perfect match with him. Just like Yuchun. Just as pretty and prudent. Bao still remembered the moment when he invited her to join the guild. He knew and felt that only the guild master, whose place she would take, would be able to take care of the guild. Yuchun did not answer immediately and first took a few leisurely sips of the carbonated drink. She didn't really want to join the guild because she didn't like crowds of people, but that is why our hero suggested that she try it, since in any case it is just a game, just a game. In addition, he was sure that the guild members would definitely like her. To me, a guild is like a family. Do you think this makes sense without you? Bao said, looking into the girl's eyes and holding out a flash drive in a closed bag. Yu Chun hesitantly pulled out his hand. After thinking a little more, she took the flash drive, but in return she asked only one thing, that Bao never leave her alone. Watching Yuki play with Kuang, our hero could not understand why he still continues to think about Yuchun. And in order to get distracted, he suggested going back. Dressed in cloaks, they walked around the main building in the border village. Bao saw Kuang hug someone other than him for the first time. As soon as he said this, Yuki laughed. It seemed to her that the hedgehog really enjoyed being pets and was also very smart. She was also touched by the sight of Kuang happily eating magic stones, and asked if she could give him more. The young man agreed. He thought that Yuki seemed to be attached to animals, but it was strange that she suddenly started chatting. A little more time passed and Yuki asked where he found Kuang. Our hero said that it seemed to be not far from the kingdom of Arthur, and it seemed that Kuang was the boss of the Rat Cave dungeon. As soon as the girl heard this, her eyes widened in surprise. She did not believe that her commander was able to tame the boss. However, Bao, without attaching much importance to this, confirmed this again, but Yuki continued to ask. Is he really using joint attacks with the former monster? Our hero actually did this for the first time, and at first he thought that nothing would work, even now for him it sounds like something impossible. Finally they came. Having read the sign hanging nearby, Bao pulled the door handle, and with curiosity he began to look inside, but then something shiny flashed to his right. He did not expect such a turn of events, but Yuki took out her sword and held it at the neck of our hero. It was not without reason that Yuki, a traitor, decided to act this way. She realized that her commander was a traitor, Kuang never thought that his caring and kind master could be such a bad person, and he immediately began to break free from the girl's tenacious hands, squeaking desperately, as if saying that she was mistaken in her conclusions. Meanwhile, Yuki's magic materialized into tenacious ropes and tied our hero's hands and feet. The rope dug painfully into the young man's body. Kuang bit Yuki's hand with his sharp teeth as resistance. A loud ouch was heard, and the girl scared the little animal off of her. Bao laughed. Does she really think he's a traitor? This amused him a little but Yuki didn't listen to him. She pushed Bao forward so that he would follow first, after which, without lowering the sword, she slammed the door behind her. Meanwhile, Tekwon carefully walked in the gloomy darkness through the dungeons. Suddenly, a monster jumped out from around the bend towards him, but the young man knew about the hidden danger because he heard someone's heartbeat and labored breathing, so he kept his hand on the swords all the time. Therefore, when the monster swung, he cut off his hand, 
and then his huge tail. The walls of the dungeon were sprinkled with blood, and puddles spread on the floor. I did a combination of lunges while gaining height, and now I was standing near the ceiling. He moved so quickly that even the monster with his four eyes did not have time to follow him and this irritated him. However, this is what the young man needed for the monster to stop controlling himself. Throwing his sword from hand to hand, Tequan jumped down on the monster and cut it with one blow, after which he landed on both feet on the ground, followed by parts of the monster's body. But as soon as they touched the ground, the smoke from the fire crumbled into microparticles and disappeared. Now Tequan has completed the task and his level has increased. Having risen and become cowardly, the young man looked into his user window. Since he first reached level 35, he was asked to update his rating. But Tequan decided to abandon such a tempting idea. Since he is only level 35, why worry about the rating? However, this is not enough. He understood this by looking at the empty place of the guild captain, and he also knew that the guildmaster felt worried about this. Walking through the dungeon, he remembered their last meeting. So it was. Being alone, Yuchen walked backwards around the room in front of the map of the kingdom and thought. The fact that the guild quest started was a problem, but still it was necessary to participate in the guild's quest no matter what. But Sherin opposed her decision, since they had lost the name of the guild, and their captain had disappeared somewhere. But Yu Chun was sure that during the quest she could make a big name for herself again. As for the empty place at the head, no one will ever be able to fill it. However, if there is no leader, then Brother Tag will take his place next. Realizing this fact, Taekwon involuntarily shrank. And now he sat down on a stone and rested. He understood that Yu Chun had become attached to the guild. It took her a whole year to get close to the other members. The entire guild is now just waiting for the captain to return, waiting until the leader returns. Like Yu Chun, the new guild Taekwon must also change. So much so that others would not be able to catch up. And this made him a little sad. While our hero and Yuki were at the head of the polar bear knights, Toilette and Tarzan pitched a tent near the village. The guys were sorting out the documents and now wanted to end their careers as quickly as possible. Now that the task of repairing the walls was completed, they decided to return to Captain Reed. But then someone knocked at the entrance to their tent. It was Yuki, who without waiting for an answer, unceremoniously walked inside. After which she notified the guys that they were returning back. Toilette wanted to tell her that they were just about to go. But the girl interrupted them by showing them an order for the arrest of Song Bao, since he is a wanted traitor. And with a smile she assured the guys that, fortunately for them, the connection with the two of them and Song Bao was not confirmed. And since she is from the search party, she ordered them to follow her to the Corps of Knights since the commander of the Polar Bear Knights had arrived. Its head was a respectable elderly man. First he introduced himself and greeted our hero. But the fact that he met Bao, who was sitting tied to a chair in such a good mood, amused the young man a little. Kuang, as always, sat next to him, not leaving his owner. His witty words made the man laugh, and he even complimented that Bao was quite cheerful and small, just like a traitor. Having said this, the man became gloomy, but his change of mood had no effect on our hero. In addition, the mission quest chains in the game have just been updated. The commander of the knights knew that he was a traitor and specially called him to the border village to personally find out everything. Now Bao's task was to prove his innocence to the commander of the knights. After reading the new mission, our hero became sad. He really didn't want to deal with all these problems again. But there was nothing to do, and he somehow needed to save himself. And while Kuang was trying to gnaw through the magic ropes with his teeth, he asked what convinced the head of the knights that he was a traitor. But now the man was worried about something else. He did not expect that the boss of the Rat Cave dungeon was domesticated, and this is what confirmed the guilt of our hero. Crossing his arms over his chest, the man began to talk. In the kingdom of Arthur, there is a legend about King Arthur, who founded a state named after him. In the history of the kingdom, there was only one person who was able to tame the boss, King Arthur. But Vau also tamed the monster. But even if it is just a rumor, it is disrespectful to say such a thing. Now that the head saw everything with his own eyes, he no longer needed any evidence of treason. Because he no longer needed other reasons, our hero calmly looked at the sword pointed at his chest. Are you really jealous and that's why you call me a traitor? If you're jealous, why don't you tell me? He asked directly with a smile on his face. The head's hand holding the sword trembled. But Bao should have chosen his words more carefully when expressing himself. Since he provoked the head, he plunged his sword into him. A wave of pain consumed the young man, forcing him to scream and choke. And the sword moved on, cutting skin, muscles, meat, and organs. But the head heartlessly looked at the torment of our hero. The young man's vision became blurred from pain. The head is dangerous. The head is much more dangerous than he thought. Luckily, the head hit his right forearm. Bao's strength quickly left him. He continued to scream, feeling pain. Since he received very serious injuries, the game system decided to further stimulate his body, but this could cause the body to disconce. Our hero didn't even have the strength to resist, although at this rate he would rather die than survive. However, he had a faithful assistant, Kuang, 
who could not allow anyone to cause his master torment, and the animal ignited rushed at the head. Such devotion touched the man. According to his observations, capable traders are always more attractive. Grabbing Kuang, he threw him aside. From such a blow, the animal fell down, painfully hitting its head on the marble floor. Finally, the head took the sword out of our hero. The man assumed that Bao probably fed Kuang with precious magic stones, and therefore the animal remained close to Song Bao due to the benefits. Without hiding his sword, the man approached Kuang and bent over him. Now the animal is finally his, and no one will dare to oppose him. Sudden clang of metal, and from somewhere a barrier arose that did not allow the man to continue reaching for the hedgehog. It was Kachkaslime who returned in time and was now desperately defending his little friend. Mentally, he reproached himself for not being able to appear earlier. Gradually, our hero began to come to his senses. No matter what, he must stop the commander of the knights. Of course, he did not imagine that he would have to use a rune stone to summon Kachkaslime. When the head pierced him with a sword, in a fit of agony, Bao took out a rune stone and summoned a pile of jelly mussels, after which he ordered him to break everything. Thanks to this, the young man managed to free himself from the ropes. He was angry that the head dared to touch not only him, but also his child. The lock clicked. It was Bao who decided to use his zookeeper belt. But in order to use it, those who needed it were needed, and two of them were already there. It is this little thing that will now help restore the damaged stamina and mana of Kuang and Kachko Slime. Meanwhile, the former members of the King of the End Guild arrived again at the Registrar. Since there were no other users, this meant that they came first. A standing knight in armor asked if the guys came here to receive a guild quest. Yu Chun confirmed this. Only five people will be able to become participants. To register, they also need to enter the name of the guild and representatives, as this is needed for identification. Yu Chun took the contract and began to read it carefully. The purpose of the guild's quest was to find an outstanding warrior in the kingdom of Arthur. But in order to gain the right to become a knight, the kingdom needed to prove itself in a combat competition. For this, it was necessary to select five representatives from each guild to prepare for the upcoming martial arts tournament. After reading the terms of the quest, the girl's eyes widened. She remembered that Tequan recently said that he was going to complete tasks to increase his level. Has he, the most important person on their team, still not returned? Our hero tried to solve the problem peacefully, but he failed. Therefore, he will have to act by force. He used the connecting skill between him and Kachkoslime. The young man took out his sword. Before returning to the conversation again, he had to beat the head and teach him a lesson. His muscles recharged and were used as a battery, temporarily increasing his strength and physical abilities. Taking a fighting stance, Bao prepared for battle. But the head only wanted to know one thing, and he didn't know whether Bao would give him an answer to this. Although our hero had no desire to conduct conversations, since the man called him a traitor. What else does he need from him? But the head needed a few answers, and someone to listen to him. He was constantly tormented by the question, Did the one he trusted most betray our hero? Someone whose word you trusted more than the arguments of others? Bao did not take his words seriously. Are NPC people really restoring their bodies? But remembering the cracks in the walls, I assumed that black magic really was possible. And the commander continued to say that his life was full of betrayals, but each time he recovered from this wound. However, recently a subordinate who swore his allegiance threatened him, just like our hero. Having poured out his soul, the man, possessing the skills of magic, ran to Bao. Wriggling away from his tenacious hands, the young man asked who this subordinate was, and what was his surprise when he learned that from now on it was him. Without losing composure, our hero strengthened his muscles, thanks to which the blow with the sword would be several times stronger. He would have hit the commander if he had not been so strong. From the blow, the sword blade began to crumble and crack, but the head was not going to stop and continued to attack. In the meantime, he continued to talk about the traitor whom he took revenge on. Bao tried his best to concentrate on the battles. By joining forces with Kachkoslime, he strengthened his energy by collecting mice and then released them. The commander's eyes darkened from the blow to the head. With a weakened voice, he still told his story. It turns out he sacrificed that traitor. This made Bao even more angry, and concentrating all his power and strength in his fist, he hit the man, after which he created a fiery core and blew it up to distract attention. While the head was lying unconscious on the floor, our hero and the guys had to run, but the enemy was too talkative. Meanwhile, his level increased. Still, it took longer than he expected. The young man was about to leave the dangerous place, but Kuang squeaked and pointed his finger behind him. Aren't you curious about what the offering was for? Bao was heard from behind. Turning around, he saw the head who was already regaining his strength. At that moment, the doors to the hall opened, and Toilette with Tarzan and Yuki appeared on the threshold. Unlike them, the girl immediately understood what was what, and with the help of the staff, she awakened the magical power in herself. Relying on the devotion and loyalty of the guys, our hero shouted to them to neutralize the magician themselves. The guys unconditionally obeyed him and taking out their swords promised themselves that Yuki would not go further a step. But then a menacing bitterness was heard. 
Turning to the source of the sound, everyone saw that instead of the commander, there was a monster standing in his place. But let's return to Tekvon. By nature, he was a quiet and reserved person. And now when he stood facing his opponents, they said about him that he looked like a Buddha stone. His opponents were seven people covered from head to toe in black cloaks. It was impossible to see their faces because of their hanging hoods. Despite the fact that they planned to kidnap Tekwan, they still did not find anything fun in this. One of the people had the ability to spark fire, the rest of the people also prepared it, as if they were acting according to some plan they had already come up with. But Tekwan found it funny that they decided to kidnap him. They set themselves a painfully impossible task. His swords moved so quickly that the others did not have time to notice them. Thanks to his ability, Tekvon could control bladed weapons from a distance. And now the kidnappers tried to contrive and not fall under the blade of swords, which with the help of hands Tekvon skillfully controlled. The leader of the opponents realized that he needed to be stopped as soon as possible and ran towards him. But before reaching him he stopped, and he stuck his sword deeper into the ground. From the heat emanating from him, the shield on his back became heated, and his clothes, unable to withstand the temperature, melted. Still, the player standing in front of him who went alone against Seven was clearly crazy. When he concentrated, a fiery light emanated from him, and sparks scattered everywhere, and the fire seeped into the ground like many hands, who strove to seize Tekvon. He had already seen a similar skill somewhere, and suggested that perhaps in front of him were members of the ABC Guild from Row Online. His guesses turned out to be correct. The magician in front of him took off his hood and offered to unite before the end of the registration period for the guild quest since they cannot lose to a guild that does not have its own captain. But let's return to our hero and the monster who was breathing angrily in his direction. However, first he decided to clarify the situation so that there would be no unnecessary questions. From somewhere in front of Bao, a sword, helmet, and more armor fell. Proudly puffing out his chest and baring his teeth, the monster publicly announced that he was the monster boss from the myth of the founders. And then the system issued a task that was created based on the discovery of a guardian deity for our hero. Previously, King Arthur was the only one on the continent who was able to found a country by taming the boss monster, the guardian deity of the disappeared kingdom. Bao had to defeat a mysterious guard who somehow appeared again. The young man grabbed his armor. He didn't know what stats the monster had then, but he was sure that now he was quite strong. However, maybe the things given by the system will help him win if he uses them. But should he fight the monster like a boss? Bao looked thoughtfully at the sword. Wouldn't that be too much? A sudden gust of wind from behind him caught his attention. Turning around, he saw Yuki clearing her way with the help of a magic staff. The guys couldn't stop her attacks of incredible power, and Kachko Slime came under attack. Usually monsters died immediately from such a blow, but Kachko Slime withstood it and immediately rose to his feet. This incredibly surprised the girl, but she had no time to think about it, since Tarzan and Toilette surrounded her on all sides, since she dared to attack their captain raid. But Yuki herself did not understand what was happening. Watching the monster, our hero tried to explain to her that the commander of the knights had turned into a terrible monster, and Kachka Slimy was his subordinate. He did not intend to convince Yuki, so he gave her the right to choose who to believe. Choose a monster pretending to be the commander of the knights or him, who has been labeled a traitor. Yuki was confused and thought about it. Seeing her indecision, our hero asked her to step aside and not interfere until he caught the boss. And having made his signature swing of the sword, he prepared for battle. He took a deep breath, exhaled, and, heating the blade of his sword, ran towards the monster. He was also joined by the fire Kuang, which gnawed the fiery core, but touching the monster's fur, the flame went out. As the monster expected, the young man and the hedgehog were still close. But how long would their close relationship last, and even joked that if they survived his attack, he would tell his life story. But our hero did not want to listen to someone's chatter again, but wanted to blow off the monster's head, who was about to grab them with his clawed paws. Fortunately, our hero quickly realized what was coming and hugged Kuang. The hall they were in was completely electrified. The walls, ceiling, floor, there was lightning everywhere. It took a lot of effort for Bao to move from place to place without taking damage. He understood that if he took this blow, he could die. Kuang squeaked desperately as the young man's clothes were burning, but Bao in response only asked him not to stop his flame. The monster rubbed its paws, fiddling with its fingers. Following this, the streams of his energy, like ribbons blowing in the wind, reached out to his opponent. Then our hero decided to take extreme measures and merged with Kuang into one single hole. After this, the strength of both increased, and they released a fiery stream. Thanks to the absorbed aura of Captain Reed, they were able to release incredibly hot flames that could also block melee attacks. Two forces of opposition collided with each other and exploded with intensity. When the dust began to slowly settle, the monster saw Bao holding Kuang tightly to his chest. The monster grinned. His fur was burned in places, and there were burns in some places, but he was not going to stop telling his story. King Arthur never tamed it. At first they had a contractual relationship, 
as conditions for helping people in the war, he accepted the price of human sacrifice. Based on this, our hero assumed that King Arthur did not keep his promise, and therefore the monster is still angry because of this. However, I was wrong. Having tasted the blood of the monster, he could not stop the war. Humanity is dying like flies, why then do they need a victim? King Arthur wanted peace, and said that he was ready to sacrifice himself to stop the bloodshed. That's why the monster took over his body. To be more precise, King Arthur took the monster's body. From what they heard, Toilette and Tarzan froze in place, and Yuki gasped in surprise. And the monster continued to talk. Until King Arthur died almost alive, he continued to start wars. A kingdom built on the lives of innocent people and the lineage of his blood flows through this country. The monster wanted to destroy everything. He wished he could return the words that our hero had previously spoken to the rest of the proud knight. It's up to you to decide what you want to believe. Will you remain a traitor and help me? Or will you help the kingdom prosper? The monster asked. And without waiting for an answer, he scratched the palm of his hand with his claw, releasing blood. Even the game system offered our hero a choice. King Arthur, who lived his life in injustice, tried to master a new power to compare the kingdom with the earth. And now the young man had to choose whether to join the rebellion and follow this vengeful man or not. But before answering, Bao asked if he could ask one more question. He wanted to make sure that the monster was truly betrayed. And while the monster was thinking about how to answer, he approached him and grabbed his hand. After all, it was the monster who started the war and also the one who survived. Moreover, it was he who sacrificed and still sacrifices human lives. Without listening to him to the end, the monster took his paw. The wound on his palm gradually healed, and soon only a small scar remained there. Since the run turned out to be deep, our hero did everything slowly. He came up with an amazing idea. Why not tame the monster? And while Kuang was gnawing with pleasure on a gem the color of clear water, Bao continued to ask the monster why he continued to pretend. After which he repeated once again that the monster was a subordinate, after which he again grabbed the sword with both hands. He decided to use a special wizard skill, double charge, since he could use two skills at the same time. And making a bullet lunge, he ran towards the monsters, deciding to use a piercing blow enhanced by the fiery and frosty auras. But the monster was not going to give up so easily and allow someone to teach him. His paw, which was about to grab the sword and break it into pieces, could not even touch the blade due to changes in auras. This was the first time the monster had encountered anything like this in his life. It's not often that you see an enemy use an aura that envelops a weapon and increases damage when hit. But due to the tension of both opponents, the shockwave carried them in different directions. Watching what was happening, Toilette only now realized what a strong and terrible person their mentor was. Meanwhile, Shen stood in the stadium in front of several tens of thousands of spectators at the tournament. He could not be amused. His opponent has not yet arrived, but if he does not appear at all, he will automatically be chosen as the winner of the final qualifying match of the royal tournament. Shen was now so pleased with himself that when he tried to shake his head, he almost ruined his slicked hairstyle. Then I'll throw my hands up. He shouted to the whole stadium that if you don't take into account Captain Reed, then he is the best here. His statement made Yuchen a little sick at the podium. This idiot who knows about cryptocurrency is even talking about their captain here. But Cher and Sheena even found it a little funny despite the fact that he took the name of their guild. But this didn't make things any easier for Yu Chun. But then someone behind her began calling Shen obscene names. Like how dare this scum standing in the arena talk about Captain Reed like that. Yu Chun lowered her eyes down. Flicker was a huge fan of their leader. But why is she ashamed of this? But then the whole stadium fell silent at once. A magician entered the arena. First, he bowed to everyone and then used a special artifact with the help of which, being in another place, thanks to this, everyone could see the hologram of the king of the kingdom. With a majestic smile, the ruler greeted all guests and residents of the state. Relatively recently, the country became a victim of a series of unpleasant incidents. And therefore, to strengthen the position of the royal family, the king wants to hire a detachment of gallant knights. Members of the guild who remain last and win the tournament will receive the title of commanders of the royal army. In addition, they will be given their own territory. Finally, the king, bursting into megapixels, wished everyone good luck. Being the provocateur of the explosion, our hero was able to stay on his feet. In contrast to the gasping monster with a slightly clouded mind, Bao assumed that the monster's endurance would be greater. But alas, this is not the case. This means that the monster is not a boss. The young man used the aura shift skill, which quickly moves the active aura and tied the monster like tenacious ropes. Of course, they were not so strong and the monster managed to tear them apart, but it cost him a lot of effort. And while he was freeing himself from them, our hero raised his sword over him. However, he did not make any incision on the skin of the loser, but only presented the weapon to the neck. You will become my subordinate. The words jumped out clearly and monotonously from Bao's lips. He imagined what it looks like from the outside. 
Some weirdo is lying on top of a huge bear. A comical situation if not for the seriousness of what is happening, the monster thought. Does anyone really want him to relinquish his power again exactly as happened a hundred years ago? But this is exactly what the young man wanted. And then he will be able to avenge the monster. But only by his own method. Revenge. This is what the monster wanted for so long, and for this he was ready to do anything. Before releasing the wound on his paw, he asked what our hero needed from him to achieve this goal. Loyalty and honesty. This was Bao's answer. The monster didn't even think about the offer. He agreed immediately. Our hero did not even suspect that it would be so easy to calm such a monster. And then he slashed his own palm, after which the young man and the monster made a deal. Now he took a blood oath to King Arthur in revenge for becoming the monster boss Bao had to destroy Arthur's kingdom, and now he cannot refuse this mission. He waited for the blood to clot on his palm. He decided to discuss the details with the monster later, since there was something he still had to deal with. It was Yuki, who stood aside all this time with her mouth open, and she asked herself what she just saw. Feeling the power, Bao approached her, and he laid his sword on her shoulder, giving the girl the choice to follow her, the master of the true king, or be betrayed by the bloodline of monsters. Instead of answering, Yuki threw her sword on the floor and tore the order of the polar bear knights from her shoulder, which she also immediately threw aside. Her answer was obvious. Our hero smiled and raised the order. He liked Yuki's simplicity. And handing the little thing back to the girl, he asked to keep it, since it would be needed in the future. Yuki nodded and asked about the captain's well-being. Now his wounds have already healed. However, he really could have died. He needs to become stronger, even stronger, and bring chaos with his team of desperate and loyal followers. By the way, Flicker, who so ardently defended Captain Reed, was now entering the quest arena in the final round. Soon, one of his opponents will be Shen, who, no matter how you look at him, still gives the impression of a good fighter. But now the blonde had to defeat all his partners in order to overthrow Shen, because I couldn't let him insult the captain's name. So now he fought fiercely. His opponent, the archer, could barely stand on his feet so as not to bend and fall to his knees in front of him. Well, the young man hit him on the head with the back of his sword, and having lost his balance, the man fell and Flicker emerged victorious from this fight. He was a national youth champion. Meanwhile, our hero was absorbed in solving important issues and problems. Kuang did not see the user's window from the outside and now watched the owner in surprise. Since Bao defeated a rare genius monster and completed the quest, he was credited with a reward and was also given a new title for defeating the historical monster. Having opened the chest, the young man was slightly disappointed. He completed difficult quests and he also made good progress, but he was only given one reward. This was the Rune of Space. She had the ability to instantly cover a short distance, as well as move to a long distance in which a given rune stone was located, and also use spatial magic. A pleasant bonus turned out to be the same donated knight's armor that the game gave to our hero to defeat the monster. Despite the fact that the commander of the polar bear knights used the sword for a long time, it was preserved in excellent condition. However, like armor, the items had pretty good characteristics, since the previous owner was a knight commander. In any case, Bao was glad that the objects were filled with magic. Only now, the furry monster standing behind him devoured the previous commander. However, he instantly became obedient after he took the object handed to him. Although Kuang still did not trust the monster and kept grinning in his direction. Thanks to completing missions, his belt has improved in capabilities and characteristics, thanks to which any creature will become submissive immediately after putting on the belt. Such characteristics pleasantly pleased Bao, and he immediately put on the armor and accompanying items. Now that all his rewards have been cleared, should they return to pending matters? While he was pondering this question, on the other side of the world, Shen was fighting in a duel at a tournament. According to his calculations, the enemy will be defeated after his first attack. However, the soldier dodged his sword, and as if by chance with sadness in his voice, he said that unfortunately for him they were not alike and would not be worthy opponents for each other. Shen wanted to say something offensive and sarcastic to him, but was hit in the face with a cane by a soldier. Wiping the blood from his nose, the young man swore. And the enemy continued to chuckle, saying that he was still far from his level. His verbal provocations angered Shen more than ever. Grabbing the sword, he launched it at the soldier like an arrow. However, the opponent returned again. Then the young man ran to him. And with all his strength, he hit the soldier with his stomach. During the collision, the man was thrown away and rolled across the stadium like a ball. However, this was not the end. Shen decided to use the technique of jumping on top of the enemy, and then suppressing him with his own weight. Looking up at the huge man, the soldier laughed. He didn't think he would lose the round like this. Seeing his smile, Shen assumed that he had probably already admitted defeat. However, he was not going to stop and demonstrated his fighting skills to everyone present at the stadium. Because the only one he could lose to was Captain Raid. First, our hero decided to test himself for leadership qualities and distributed his team into two columns of people and monsters. He named the monster that possessed King Arthur Cola. In his opinion, this name suited him perfectly. 
After that, he decided to look at Yuki's characteristics and was surprised that her level had increased. Slightly embarrassed, the girl explained that these were her original abilities, since she had to hide as an ordinary soldier magician. Her magic changed. Bao did not expect that this was possible. This means that now he can get some good use out of it and decided to call Yuki something else. Without thinking twice, the name Jinny came to his mind, which the girl was not very enthusiastic about, but the others had a good laugh. Since the conditions were fulfilled, our hero could now organize the subordinate beings. However, first he needed to undergo appropriate training. Crackling his knuckles, the young man agreed to undergo training, and the world immediately began to change around him. The game system informed him that he had entered the mode of organizing subordinate creatures. For now, he was only presented with creatures and classes. He could divide his subordinates into two teams. Bao noticed to himself that from the outside it looked just like a strategic simulator. Kuang had no class or association, so the young man decided to choose a profile for him. He thought for a moment, going through his options, and then he realized that such a brave and courageous hedgehog could only be given a private first-class military class. He took Kachka Slime and Cola to a private class. When he distributed everything, the team looked more like a detachment. Since the placement of creatures and subordinates was completed, the highest class was automatically determined as the leader of the group. Having finished this, our hero decided to review his missions. He reached the highest level of intimacy with his subordinates, restored the wall in the border village, found a traitor hiding in the border village. However, he has not yet defended the borders during the guild quest. After some thought, he decided to send a group that included Tarzan, Toilette, and Ginny to the kingdom. Tarzan objected to him because their task was to protect the borders, but Bao decided to deal with this himself and for now let the guys go and report on the traitor. And smiling, he added that let them just say that he was the traitor, after which Team A had to tell everything about what happened to our hero through the runestone. And our hero will take care of the rest himself. Finally, he asked if they understood everything. In response, Team A shook their heads vigorously. But Kachka Slime and Kola had to take care of the monsters near the border wall. Kolya thought this decision was too hasty. Instead of continuing the discussion on this topic, our hero filed a claim against Kuang for the fact that the hedgehog did not teach the monster good behavior and dares to call himself private first class. At first, Kuang considered it his duty to salute his master, after which he ran up to Kolya and began to kick him on the paw, thus expressing his indignation. In any case, all six guys were subordinates of our hero, and they had to do as he ordered. Since everything had already been thought out, they just have to carry out their tasks, and our hero will be the finishing touch. In the third round guild quest, Shen became the winner and Flicker won in the fourth round. The final round of the guild quest soon began. Considering the number of victories, Shen believed that even now he would not be a loser again. He took out his sword and decided to start a fight in the name of his idol. Only his face seemed familiar to the enemy and he recognized him as that same crypto fraudster. Such a statement in a stadium where thousands of people were present undermined Shen's authority. And so he decided to take revenge on the man for this by showing all his martial arts skills. He turned his palm several times and clicked. After this, a huge palm appeared in the air which can strike the intended target, causing it to be immobilized for 30 seconds. At first, the enemy did not know how to defend against such an attack, but soon found a solution. Thanks to his skills, a huge stone grew out of the ground in front of him and his palm, hitting it, broke into several pieces. But Shen did not stop. Because of the stone, the opponent did not see him approaching, and therefore secretly hit him in the solar plexus from which he received severe damage. Shen stopped for a moment, but only in order to grab the enemy with renewed strength and throw him to the ground like a toy. The young man won the round again, and all because he was so damn cool. Well, at least he thought so. Yu Chen was watching a guild quest with her friends. Not only had they locked Taekwon in prison, but now they were going to send him to war. And they also knew that he couldn't use chat room skills, which means they did it on purpose. Although Shen's victory was still quite beautiful. But his fanaticism irritated Yu Chun. So why then should she praise this battle? However, Deccan even agreed that Shen was very good. It may seem that he was lucky to be in the finals, but the ABC Guild is now going through a difficult situation. Shen must have great talent. At least that's what Deccan thought. Of course, he managed to defeat the head of the ABC Guild, but Yu Chen was not sure about his abilities. Not to mention Shen, she was more annoyed by the fact that Taekwon was imprisoned. And because of this, her plans to use the strongest participant in the final round failed miserably. Deccan wanted to express her opinion on this matter, but they received a message. In it, Taekwon assured them that he would deal with the ABC Guild himself. Meanwhile, at the Guild Quest, the second battle was taking place in the final round. Flicker had to fight against a militant girl. By the way, she was his fan. It was an honor for her to meet him. And he looked even better up close than from the stands. Slightly embarrassed, Flicker thanked him for the compliment. Still, a game is a game, and the girl was not going to be lenient towards her idol. 
Her determination seemed to the young man a blessing from heaven. He almost said that he was ready to fight with honor. If a girl played with a giveaway, she would lose too quickly. For critical damage, Flicker decided to aim for the neck. For him, this was quite possible. And having seized the advantage, he would gain victory at the moment when the enemy relaxed his vigilance. As soon as the young man took a defensive position, the girl decided to attack. The closer she got, the faster she picked up speed. This is exactly what Flicker was waiting for. Tensing, he swung. Everything in his blow defeated the enemy, even the air that hissed through the sword. The girl was unable to calculate his response to her attack and flew back like a ball. Flicker developed this exclusive skill several years ago and always used it on the sly when his opponent was not ready for it. And now, smiling modestly, he listened to the admiring applause of the audience. The young man himself believed that he had a good hit on the enemy. But then, as if by intuition, he sensed that something was happening behind the watchful tower. And this is Tarzan with Toilette and Yuki who arrived to notify the authorities about the traitors who had appeared. Their appearance was not part of Flicker's plans. He actually has an important process here. Meanwhile, the developers began to have more and more problems. If everything goes on like this, it will get much worse. Something is clearly going wrong. In this situation, if Song Bao dies in the game, he risks dying in real life. Data associated with it is not yet available. The developer wasn't sure, but the game system may have used electrical stimulation, which was only tested in extreme cases. There are no problems with other players, but with Kopitano Raid, everything is more complicated. Disabling the electrical stimulation system is risky, because it is possible that Song Bao will die while in the game, which means that there is only one way out. The developer printed the received data and reports on a printer, which he then brought into the office of the chief director, Kyo. According to the developer's calculations, the company should make an announcement that Song Bao is alive. Kyo carefully read and studied the documents, after which I decided to make a deal. Regarding the case of Captain Reed, and a threefold increase in salary, the developer should have formed a team with several people from the maintenance team for the work of Captain Reed's case to find the bug. And for this, the chief director will triple their salaries until this incident comes to light. But the developer still did not understand why the remaining members of the small group should be from the support team. It turns out from Cow's thoughts that by creating a separate team for the Captain Reed case of only four people, this was supposed to minimize the possibility of a leak if the problem was later discovered. And taking out the phone, I dialed the number of the head of the HR department. At first glance, there was nothing unusual in the library in which our hero was located, although everything looked as if this place had been abandoned for a long time. The young man went to the shelves and took several books. There was also the use of magical culture, understanding of the engineering of magic, and the magical theory of magical inflation. However, there was no dust on the books at all. All the time watching his master, Kuang took his example from him, and now, not having the skills to read and write, he began to closely look at books. Bao thought about it. Is it possible that someone was thinking about the same things as him? Or maybe there is something in the library. Maybe something is hidden, let's say when the room is turned upside down, a secret room is revealed. There can't be much dust gathering here due to the terraforming, which means there's something hidden in the room. This may be the reason that the dust does not have time to settle. Most likely this is true. The mission given to him this time was very strange even after the border protection mission. Our hero thought that this was the end of the traitor's mission, but was summoned by the fake knight commander of the mob bosses, as well as the fact that the monster is the real king of the kingdom of Arthur. Even though the monster has switched souls, it is not as strong as normal bosses. He didn't even have to fight. Even if the young man defeats the monster, nothing will change. Bao couldn't believe that the border protection mission was just to kill time. They must want something from him. Kuang reached for a book on the shelf and when he tried to take it out, he lost his balance. Fortunately, our hero caught him in time. Making sure that everything was fine, he put the animal back on the shelf. After which he made a remark to him that he would swear if Kuang just read without thinking. Of course, the hedgehog did not want to be punished. However, his stats should have increased thanks to his hobbies, for example, like books and magic stones. However, Bao couldn't see his custom window, which was a little disappointing. But then he remembered that he promised Kuang to make a weapon for him. First, he decided to make a sword. To do this, he will need magic stones, blades of the praying mantis, which he defeated in the dungeon, and a compression ring. Having taken out all the items, our hero began to connect them. Under the magical pressure of his hands, objects began to melt, becoming more pliable. But everything was ready, and Bao, no matter what it became, began to connect the objects. However, then the tiles on the floor in the library began to glow, spreading energy around. Another moment and all the things, chairs, tables, books flew up causing chaos around. When the dust settled and our hero, covering Kuang with himself, saw the ruins around him, he noticed that it was a good attempt and also asked the animal for forgiveness. After all, he still promised him to make weapons. 
Speaking of which, they looked at the end result of the experiment. It was something like a sphere that pulsated as if alive. At first, the captain of the guard did not expect to see in front of him a polar bear knight and two other guys unfamiliar to him. And so I immediately asked what was happening. In order for their conversation to remain confidential, Ginny built a magical barrier around them that would not allow others to hear what they were talking about. Tarzan said that a traitor had appeared in the border village, so they returned first. And according to their observations, the cracks on the wall also seemed to have been made by a traitor. Unregistered monsters were also summoned, and the traitor also used black magic. But the captain of the guard did not understand why the traitor appeared in the border village, because the king was in the capital. On behalf of the search team, Toilette explained that to some extent, they themselves do not know, since they returned immediately after repairing the walls. The captain of the guard listened carefully to the guys. Now he had to immediately report the same thing to the king, and this small search party also had to go with him as evidence. And they teleported in front of everyone. At first the stadium was expectantly silent. Then the quest worker, the magician, notified everyone that there had just been a slight hitch. But now the quest was going according to plan. Having heard the encouraging words, the spectators became cheerful and prepared to watch the fights. Flicker entered the arena first. Shen arrived after him. The magician hit his wand on the stone tile and began to repeat the rules of duels again. Like the last match, all item ability statue levels were set to level 30. Waving his hands, the magician wished the guys a good match and good luck and then left. Shen was someone who had nothing to do with Captain Reed. Ever since Flicker heard that Shen was using his fame for his own gain, he decided to make sure that Shen would never open his mouth again. Confident of his victory, Flicker took out his sword, using his electrical aura which condensed and released the magical power of thunder. However, his warlike appearance did not frighten Shen. He was even pleased that someone was jealous of his absolute admiration for Captain Reed. He began to warm up, increasing future attacks through muscle stimulation. And so both guys were warmed up, and the audience got ready to enjoy the upcoming spectacle. In the first attack, both opponents emphasized their powerful strength, but Flicker added a little more agility, and Shen added weight to his blow. Because of which the weapon turned out to be heavier than Flicker thought, and also faster. If he had made a mistake, he would have been pushed back. He attacked Shen first, but the enemy survived. It turned out to be not so easy to defeat Shen, which now instantly increased muscle and fat mass, allowing you to gain more explosive power. He, like Captain Reed, could heat the metal of a sword to a temperature at which it could be easily shaped. It was one of the skills of physical strength. Soon Shen began to spin along a horizontal axis, using it as a line around which to spin. Thanks to this, when swinging his sword, he could cause great damage to the enemy. At first Flicker humbly watched him, and then he got tired of waiting and decided to attack again. Moreover, he knew about such a trick, and he knew how to get around it. To do this, it was necessary to surround the entire body with one's aura, increasing agility and brute strength. As he ran, the pressure of his body broke the tiles on the ground, leaving huge dents in the ground. His attack was as fast as lightning and if it reached the target, it would cause massive damage to the enemy. Both guys were so excited by the thought of revenge that they were even ready to kill each other during a skirmish. However, the battle had to be interrupted due to an emergency. When this was announced, Flicker and Shen immediately stopped. It turned out that they were both declared winners by the king. In fact, the king of the kingdom, Arthur, was killed by an unknown entity. With this sad news, there was no longer a need to choose a guild to protect the king. So the captain of the guard invited both guilds to the royal palace. And our hero is still thinking. The item was successfully manufactured, but what was the explosion? Magic was definitely involved here. The young man was sure of it. And then they began to quickly call him Tarzan from the runestone. He informed him that unregistered monsters were attacking the kingdom while they were talking with him. Hearing this news, everything inside Bao grew cold. His A group was late and the king was killed. When they already found him dead, it looked like he had been dead for some time. However, they managed to notice the spatial magic circle right next to the throne. Tarzan assumed that the monsters were summoned by this magic circle. Bao barely had time to digest what he heard. He wanted to ask the guys about the details, but communication with them was interrupted. Magic reacted to the magic tile and created a magic circle in the kingdom. And then the game system notified our hero that the mission to protect the borders of the kingdom of Arthur was completed. But out of four tasks, he completed only three. Bao cursed. He felt a strange feeling for a while. But why does it happen every time something important happens? The young man gathered his thoughts and called Group B to him. As soon as Cola materialized in front of him, he immediately began to be indignant. Why Bao sent him to work alone, and asked him to do something, since the magic circle had already been activated. Instead of answering, Bao looked at Kuang. The hedgehog immediately ran up to Cole, and he began to kick him on the paw with all his strength, as if showing that one should not be rude and arrogant with their owner. 
Cola immediately made guilty eyes and continued to say that those guys who appeared because of the magic circle that he kept were coming here. And I also wanted to ask our hero something. What if these guys come so he won't be too rude? Meanwhile, in the building assigned to the ABC Guild, one of its members was indignant that they were always making the worst raids, and he was constantly being suspended. Continuing to be indignant, he left the room and headed into the corridor, from where a sword stabbed into him from a corner. Tekvon appeared after him. Hearing a cry for help, help arrived at the scene of the incident. However, here two skillful swords saved their owner from death. Soon two more guys in raincoats stood in Tekvon's way. He also dealt with them with ease. As with another archer, shoot an arrow into the back of the unborn. His corpse fell right in front of the ABC guild captain rushing to help. And he, burning with a desire to avenge his friends, rushed to fight with the young man. However, in response to his attack, Tekwon inflicted three scarring blows on him using the features of swords. And then he imbued the swords with his magical powers and seemed to shoot them at the captain. Having performed a somersault in the air, the young man landed epically on the floor, silently admiring his skill. Soon our hero learned that he had completed the mission and would soon be given additional rewards. Also, if something happened, he could look at detailed information about his allies and soldiers. Bao was of course very happy about this, but he had a bad feeling, and it did not let him down. In order to begin a new mission he had to be transported to a separate location soon. And so it happened. As soon as the area around Bao began to take shape, he saw that he was in the desert among dried out trees and unfinished buildings. The young man was again angry that he was moved from one place to another without his permission. Well, at least he has a summoning stone. He will call his subordinates as soon as the cooldown rolls back. But he didn't want to waste time and therefore decided to take care of Kuang from the bottom of his heart, and therefore opened the status window. The statistics of the animal increase due to the accumulation of experience points depending on the type of activity, but individual statistics were not provided. Bao could also determine the distribution of experience points by setting the load for base statistics. And the hedgehog could also receive hidden stats depending on the type of activity that were added through objects and runes. Its capabilities will also be automatically analyzed and converted into combat power. Our hero carefully studied this information, but then Kuang began to distract him with his squeaking. The animal tried its best to make a spinning circle above itself with its hands, as if to say, why aren't they using the sphere they made in the library yet? But Bao forgot about the sphere when Tarzan told him about the death of the king. He should check the quality of the sphere. Taking out the little thing, he handed it to Kuang. And the satisfied hedgehog began to play with the sphere. He now had his own magical instrument, created by his master. However, in order to use the sphere, he needed to fulfill a number of certain conditions. But then the smart hedgehog realized that he could lose the sphere if he carried it with him. This means that the sphere must be kept in a safe place. And this is undoubtedly the place under his cap. And feeling like a world-class genius, Kuang put the sphere under his cap. Our hero watched him with emotion, but he was distracted by the growing stomping of someone and dust in the distance. Soon a flock of goblins began to descend into the valley, but the young man was distracted from them by the fact that he was credited with awards, and he immediately began to examine them. First on the list of rewards was a bundle with a resurrection tree. It was used to return to life with the help of powerful energy that does not exist in this world. However, the item could not be used for oneself. Next was an unnamed key that responded to a specific magical power, and the third item was an energetic flask, filled with magical liquid energy at regular intervals, and used to cleanse anything. The rewards pleasantly pleased Bao, but then the goblins ran past him without paying attention. The young man could barely stay on his feet as the creatures inadvertently touched him. Soon they also carried building materials past without paying attention to him. Their indifference infuriated the young man. He did not understand what was happening. If they are so restless and have some task, then let them share it with him. However, the goblins listened to him silently and continued to carry stones and tree trunks, leaving our hero in confusion. Why was he even brought to this place? He is not yet recovered and therefore cannot even talk to Kola. So 30 minutes passed. Bao sat down on a rock and began to wait while Kuang entertained himself. Getting stuck in the game Astrum is the biggest problem. Another 10 minutes passed. For a Korean or a gamer, there should always be a way out even in the worst case scenario. Another minute passed, and the young man began to slowly go crazy from idleness, after which he laughed with hysterical laughter, and he began to circle around himself, dancing some kind of pagan dance. It cannot be that there is no continuation in a game created by artificial intelligence. In any case, he has some kind of task, some kind of mission. Meanwhile, his group A with the captain of the guard explored the place where the king was killed. Surely the monsters were summoned using a spatial magic circle. Tarzan held the runestone tightly, but they never heard an answer. The guys remembered Bao's instructions. First, they had to tell everyone that he was a traitor and let him get rid of the monsters. Tarzan again tried to call their mentor, but the answer was silence. Finally, in the hope that his words would be heard, 
The young man wished Captain Reed to be careful, but Ginny noticed to herself that now they needed luck more than ever. Right above them, a monster crawled out of the spatial magic circle. Ginny tried to neutralize him with the help of her magic, but she caused scanty damage to the monster. As the girl expected, the monster has black magic, and therefore her protective magic does not affect him. But the guys promised that they would instantly cut the monsters into pieces. However, here the spatial ring expanded, and in front of them there was no longer one monster, but several. The guys didn't think that there would be more of them than they expected. But then someone next to them began to use magic of the highest level of flame. Turning around, they saw the captain of the guard. His cloak was fluttering as if in the wind, and sparks were shooting out from under the sword. And running forward, he began to fulfill his duty to the kingdom. That is, to shred and destroy monsters. Realizing that there was no time, Ginny decided to talk about the fact that she is a magician and is part of the search group of the Polar Bear Knights. And she added that the results of the secret investigation say that the commander of the knights defending the borders is a traitor. The captain of the guard did not expect to hear this, and also that the traitor has tamed the monster and is fighting alongside it. Toilette and Tarzan became worried, hoping that everything would be okay with Captain Reed. The angry captain of the guard ordered Ginny to return back to the Polar Bear Knights and report the critical situation. After a fight between Tequan and members of the ABC Guild, Yuchun, Charin, and Deccan soon arrived at the scene of the clash. They knew that he was very scary when he was angry, but they didn't think that he could kill so many people at once. But where did Tequan go after all this mess? Charon laughed. Most likely it has already begun. Deccan also believed that the situation was out of control and offered to meet with Tequan and settle everything. Although Yu Chun knew that they could not stop him and believed that they should not interfere now. Since Captain Reed couldn't stop Tequan, how will they do it? However, Deccan objected to her. Should they really remain idle? In the forest among the trees and mountains, one of the guilds lit a fire to keep warm. And a man came out to them into the light of the fire. The guild would not mind accepting him, if not for one thing. His swords, which he carried in front of him. No one had time to react and one of the guild, mortally wounded, was already falling to the ground. No one expected Tequan to show up at such a late hour. And now, controlling his swords from a distance, he will kill them. Like animals for slaughter. Then the guild decided to shoot at the enemy with crossbows. But Tequan intercepted the arrow in the air and aimed it at the swordsman. Above another soldier, he cut a tree and a thick trunk fell on him and crushed him. He dismembered a couple more soldiers with chains. And some were unlucky. He strangled them. But the surviving men still did not lose hope of defeating Tequan. And the shooters from cover tried to hit him with arrows from crossbows. But Tequan turned the arrows in the air and aimed them at themselves. No one could hide from him. Meanwhile, Yu Chun and her friends continued to talk. And Tequan only had one opponent left alive. With his eyes flashing, he decided to use a temporary attack from swords resembling hail on him. Gritting his teeth in the face of death, the man asked him why he needed all this. And at that moment, at the other end of the kingdom, Arthur Yukon with Deccan and Charon came to a general conclusion. Let those who have sinned a lot pay for it. And in the clang of metal piercing the ground, someone's death cry was drowned. Everything in the royal palace shone with expensive decorations and gilding. Flicker and Shen, walking along the corridor of the palace, tried not to show hostility. But from time to time, they threw glances of hatred at each other. In order to defuse the situation, the captain of the guard praised them for the fact that, being at such a young age, they had reached the finals and a bright future surely awaited them. Slightly embarrassed, the guys thanked for the compliments, and like true gentlemen, pointed out that they were still lagging behind in many ways. But because of an incident, they had to stop the battle. It's definitely amazing to reach finals at their age. However, each of the guys was sure that at the end of the final, he would have won, and not his opponent. Seeing that the guys were not getting along very well, the captains of the guard decided to get down to business. Following the White Bear and Black Tiger, two guilds, the winners of the tournament will become knights. As for the name, they were called Golden Bird. Since the palace was attacked, the captain and the Black Tiger knights will defend it. And the union of two guilds, the knights of the Golden Bird and the White Bear, whose whereabouts of the commanders are still unknown, then the task for Shen and Flicker will be to find the traitor. And the captain of the guard has little time. So they learn additional information from the Knights of the White Bears. And far, far away in the desert, our hero could not occupy himself with anything. And I still couldn't find the answer to the question. Why does the 24 hours needed for recovery last so long? He held the summoning runestone tightly in his hand, but was unable to hear anyone. In order to somehow pass the time, Bao even got rid of the goblins, but to no avail. Having rested a bit, he looked out of his user window. And I even checked the earring and necklace, which is soul collecting. But the indicators have not changed and the goblins continued to appear even after the murder. This is not fair. When Bao decided to become stronger, the game ruined everything. The young man was beside himself with anger. However, then he noticed that the behavior of the goblins had changed. Looking around, he saw an explosion occur somewhere far on the horizon. 
Has something really happened and now he will finally begin the mission? Inspired, our hero ran to the scene of the incident, while he was haunted by a strange premonition. Running closer, he realized what was wrong. One of the buildings that the goblins built had collapsed due to poor construction. Bao finally began to guess. He probably had to become an architect to build a strong building. But the game made its own adjustments, warning him that if he dies or is caught by King Arthur's knights or other users, then the game is over. Also, errors may occur during the mission, and he had to make sure that he was evacuated until a new mission appeared. Bao thought about it. The mission that didn't appear looks like they're making fun of him. But does the artificial intelligence with the game really think that it will die if it meets the knights? Meanwhile, people were selected who participated in the team of specialists for the errors of the Astrum game. When the list with the names of team members was posted in the office, everyone noticed that with such professionals, all mistakes would certainly be corrected soon. The researcher who observed Song Bao was outraged that everyone began to discuss it right in front of the president's office. Having taken the necessary things, he headed to his ward. Lately, he hasn't had any free time to rest. His head was busy with various problems. Entering the office, the first thing that caught his eye was that it was written on the monitor screen that a historical error had been noticed in the game. But let's return to our hero. Since he was considered a traitor, a reward was assigned for him, and a debuff was added to him. Now the more opponents he had, the more his characteristics decreased. They could even drop to 40%. At first, Bao was slightly confused by so many new conditions. Although he assumed something like this in his opinion, reducing the characteristics is too cruel. But there was good news. The evil mind ability with high charisma was created. Now the effectiveness of Bao's commands has been enhanced to the maximum. But if an unreasonable command is used, those who were given the command will treat him with hostility. This pleased Bao. Now everything will probably go fine. He closed the user window and looked towards the goblins. Finally, the time has come to stand to the end. A couple of hours later, all the goblins stood like a soldier in a line. Various marks from beatings were visible on their bodies. And Kuang from above tried to convey to them that they, useless creatures, could finally be useful to someone. While our hero was not far from him looking at a map of the area. Contrary to his expectations, the terrain was not so bad. Soon Kuang hurried to him and told him that everything was ready and the goblins were ready to start work. Bao nodded to him and rolled up the map. After which he went out to the goblins waiting for him and told them that they were never taken seriously because they were weak. That's why the goblins tried so hard with their weak skills and built a defense. Although in the end it was still destroyed by its enemies over and over again. The creatures listened to our hero with their mouths open. No one had ever described their problems like this before. And the peak of their joy came when Bao announced that he would give them a dungeon. The goblins did not remember anyone treating them with such care and generosity. But they did not last long. Frowning, our hero ordered them to first bring the materials and immediately get down to business. Meanwhile, the UNM guild surrounded one strong monster and was now trying to defeat it. Anna reasoned as she pulled the bowstring. In her opinion, it doesn't matter whether it's luck or not. But their guildmaster reached the finals, which means they are definitely in the right guild. After all, they were now designated as the final boss's guild knights. And all because Shen knows how to annoy people. Anna's speech was certainly smart, but Lu interrupted her, saying that they were now hunting and they needed to get there before the knights were called. But none of the guys were destined to kill the monster, since Shen did this by cutting the monster in half. After which he probably decided to hit the monster with his sword a couple more times with a heavy swing towards the victim. And the guys could only watch it from the side and watch as a dirty slurry, something like blood, splashed onto the ground. In between, Shen promised that now he would completely kill the monster, and then the whole guild would take a break. His words slightly tensed his team. After all, always when he called them comrades, something wrong happened. And now Shen looked around and called out to Pierre. The young man did not understand him and continued to stand still. Then Shen waved his hands more strongly and explained that Pierre was standing on his territory, which he had reserved since yesterday's hunt. However, after his statement, Pierre continued to stand in place, not understanding whether it was a joke or not. Then Shen threatened him, saying maybe he should teach him the game label, but he immediately received a slap on the head from Lu. Now it became clear to him why they always received reprimands. Following him, the rest of the guild members began to distribute blows, while Anna asked Pierre for forgiveness for Shen's inappropriate behavior. Soon, Shen, beaten with bruises and abrasions, could not even get up from the ground from pain. However, this can be allowed in the game, because there is such a thing as recovery. And our hero, contentedly rubbing his hands, rejoiced that in just 20 minutes the ability of the evil mind allowed him to control the goblins and perform many different things. Kuang did not lag behind him, also sometimes giving out his instructions to the goblins. While the effect of the potion had not worn off, Bao gave the order to move one of the houses. To which I received a mountain of indignation, they say. Do they really need to work again? 
With an absolutely calm face, our hero explained to them that of course they needed to work, or did they not want to obey him? There was nothing to do, and the goblins, sighing sadly, went back to doing hard work. In general, they found their new owner somehow strange, since they expected him to be tougher. Our hero didn't care about their opinion because in the end they still do what he tells them. According to his calculations, 24 hours had already passed, and he decided to try using the rune stone again. Fortunately, this time his attempt was crowned with success. As soon as Kola materialized in a new place, he immediately noticed that they felt very strong magic. But Bao called him here precisely for this reason, so that he could tell him about everything as quickly as possible. Kola wanted to say something, but his eyes seemed to be clouded, and he kept repeating that, these are the same ones, and what magic this is. His strange behavior worried Bao, as Kola lost his sanity and ability to speak in his absence. Maybe some kind of curse was placed on Kola. Then this explains why he was relatively weaker than the boss monster category. Stop, damn! As soon as our hero understood this, he remembered a living potion that could be used to cleanse something. The young man immediately took out a bottle of magic liquid and splashed it on Kola. The potion immediately began to work, and something appeared before our hero's eyes that he never expected to see. On the ground lay a mini version of Kola, only now cute and slightly perky, and next to it was some kind of stone. At first Bao was scared, and even thought that maybe there was some kind of malfunction, but fate took pity on him, and the game explained that someone cursed the kingdom of Arthur, whose magic was associated with the kingdom disappeared. The one who cast the curse is dangerous. Kola's attribute has been changed to border, and border is a special attribute that has the traits of a monster, but is not one. Bao carefully read the information provided. In principle, he assumed so. He should have given the cleansing potion to Kolya from the very beginning. Just like the missions where he tamed Kuang, our hero needs to make the right decisions. Perhaps the game meant this, and Kola had already stood up on his little short legs and was clumsily brushing the dust off his fur. And he was also a little offended that our hero did not understand that just because Kola did not remove the curse, this does not mean that he is irresponsible. True, when Kola was angry, from the outside it looked damn cute. Even Kuang was incredibly happy with this transformation of his new friend. But there is no Kola. Now he has lost his strength and body. Of course he was furious when the entity that bestowed powerful power appeared before him. With this entity he planned his revenge, which he had dreamed of for so long. However, he had no idea that there was responsibility for such power. And so Kola lived until Bao discovered the magic circle. And that evil entity was heading towards the kingdom of Arthur, or rather towards the entire continent. Kola wanted to tell a lot more, but an uninvited guest arrived to them. Now our hero has become the target of someone who has been spreading black magic throughout the kingdom. Games are games, but there is also real life. So Choi Yu-Chun did not forget about sports and was now burning calories on the treadmill. After half an hour of training, she received a call and the girl answered the phone. It was Cho Yongbi, the researcher who observed the body in Song Bao. He wanted to report to Yu Chun that Bao has been having health problems lately. Having heard such sad news, the girl stopped training. Maybe the researcher was referring to nutrient supply problems? But Enbi was not sure about this. But this is still an unusual case. His words excited the girl even more. She couldn't wait any longer. And the researcher tried to calm her down, saying that IG Soft had even created a special team to solve Song Bao's problem. He also promised that when everything was over, they would contact Yu Chun and asked her to keep everything a secret. Finally, the girl asked a question that worried her from the very beginning. Will Bao ever wake up? For the first couple of seconds, there was no answer. And then Enbi repeated that they were encountering this for the first time, so they didn't know. Trying not to show trembling in her voice, Yu Chun thanked her for the call and hung up. After which she sat down on the bench, trying to collect her thoughts. She understood absolutely nothing, and our hero and his subordinates continued to stand in confusion. A couple of meters away from them stood a huge monster with spikes all over its body. But a little boy controlled this monster like a horse. Small horns peeked out from his silver hair as the wind blew. Looking at Kola, the boy asked him how he became so cute again. But Kola stepped back in fear. In contrast, Bao watched the situation with interest. And picking up a stone from which black energy emanated, he asked the little devil who he was. But the boy ignored the question and asked Bao if he had discovered the magic circle. Our hero hated being ignored, so he repeated his question again. However, the boy was clearly poorly brought up because he again felt that there was no need to answer. Cola goblins, and now this little kid, Bao had more and more questions. The resulting silence seemed boring to the little devil, and he let go of the reins, ordering your pet monster to slam those annoying bipods. Bao has never met such ignorant children. However, he continued to stand in place without taking any action, because he knew that Kachko Slime would stand up for him. Walking menacingly on the ground, Kachko Slime walked against the monster. And having collided with each other's foreheads, they began to fight for endurance. In order to win, Kachko Slime decided to use his muscles to recharge like batteries, 
temporarily increasing his strength and physical skills. Thanks to this, he managed to push the monster away from him with his foot and come out of this fight as a winner. True, the monster did not want to give up and began to attack Kachkoslime again. But again, he received a powerful blow to the head and stomach. And after this, Kachkoslime cut the monster with his axe. And now he has definitely become the winner. Meanwhile, Yu Chun called an emergency meeting to discuss two problems that suddenly appeared. The ABC Guild had 44 members. And since Flickr provided a team of former members of the King of the End Guild and reached the finals with Shen, now they will have to work with him, even though he took away the name of their guild. And this made Yu Chun very angry. But besides this, there is a second problem. Someone posted a photo of a chat where there was a user called Captain Reed and it showed that everyone had read the message. This caused a huge uproar on the internet. And some unregistered guild member just sent Sharon a message. And some kind of panic arose in the comments on YouTube. When the battle was over, Bao took a closer look at the stone from which black magic emanated. And I recognized it as a runic stone for brainwashing. After reading the characteristics, our hero realized that Kola accidentally cursed himself with a rune stone. And going up to the cute little creature, he stroked his head. After all, Kola has lost his strength and body, and now he is tormented by what he has become. Watching him, the little devil was incredibly surprised. The strongest among all his subordinates was now serving another person. Bao wanted to teach the boy good manners. However, he noticed that someone had already wounded the boy, and even bloodstains were visible on his dark cloak. Squatting down, he looked down at the boy. Most likely, the little devil was injured when he tried to attack the kingdom. When the boy looked at the young man next to him, he had that familiar feeling of fear that he felt before few. But the little devil decided to tell the truth that it was true. He attacked the kingdom. Since he was injured, Bao decided to use a purification potion, and taking the plug out of the vessel, he poured the potion on the wound. After which, smiling like the Joker, he asked the boy to tell again who he is and where he is from. But his wound did not heal. Our hero did not expect that the resurrection potion would not work. Now the boy was laughing. It turned out that he was a descendant of the generation of the great demon king and his name was Kim Romachoa Madzavir Wang Yannick. And no matter how hard Bao tried, he could not be cured. However, as fate would have it, this became a new task for our hero. Now he and his subordinates were surprised that in front of him was the descendant of the great demon king. And only Kola reminded them that he asked them not to be rude and to be restrained in showing emotions. Suddenly the little devil's legs gave way and blood began to flow from his mouth. His damage became less and less, and so he fell to the ground exhausted. Now Bao had ten minutes to bring the little devil back to life. Kuang ran up to the boy, touched his forehead, and said that he had a fever. The task itself to cure the Prince of Demons was difficult, but now the limit was ten minutes. However, Bao decided not to panic, as an amazing idea came to his mind. He reached into his inventory, and he took out the Tree of Resurrection. According to his calculations, resurrecting the dead was also considered a cure. Kim hardly opened his eyes and thought that Bao was really a demon. And all because the resurrection tree was transformed, and now the young man was holding a knife in his hand. Seeing this, Kim preferred to die rather than be treated in this way. But our hero decided only to intimidate the boy. With a snap of his fingers, the knife disappeared. While he was trying to save the Prince of Demons, Kachka Slim was working hard at a construction site with goblins. Kolya didn't really like his organization of work. Although Kachko Slime believed that they were just working here and there were no problems. Hearing this, Kola shook his head and headed towards the concrete building block. Since Captain Reed was counting on them all, they had to do everything possible. And groaning, he stood up to climb up. In the end, Kachko Slime helped him and gave him a ride. Despite his slight stupidity, Kolya really liked his kindness. He also smiled sweetly when he was embarrassed. Clapping his hands, Kola took more air into his lungs. And his eyes flashed menacingly and he growled. His roar had the ability to strike fear into weaker enemies. It was under this influence that the goblins fell. They stopped work in fear and began to listen to the new commander. Taking advantage of the authority of Captain Raid, Kola conveyed the order on his behalf that the red goblins were in charge of the logs, and the blue goblins were in charge of the stones, and the green goblins were distributing and distributing the iron. Listen to the instructions, the goblins nodded and began to work. When they left, Kola again began to study the construction plan. Our hero entrusted them with a special task the construction of a defense tower. After a short period of time, Kim came to his senses again. For the first four minutes, Bao tried to heal him with the help of various potions and mixtures, but everything was inconsolable. He only had six minutes left. Having taken all measures, the young man sat not far from the little devil and thought. It was not even a special task, but a simple one. Is the difficulty too high? Seeing his efforts, Kim felt ashamed. He felt ashamed that the person he wanted to kill was trying so hard to save his life. Will there really be no more clues? The most annoying thing is that it was impossible to use the resurrection tree. Barely opening his mouth in a quiet voice, Kim said that demonic beings can only receive demonic power. Bao perked up at his words and hurried to Kuang for advice. 
but the hedgehog knew nothing about it either. Then the young man began to recall the events of the last days. Monsters near cracks in the wall of a border village. And Jean's words that perhaps there is a connection between them with black magic. It turns out they are similar. Our hero hurried to take out the summoning stone and dialed Jin. The girl immediately answered his call. Bao wanted her to help him heal Kim. But Jean could not come, since the captain of the guard was looking for her. Then Bao asked if she had ever heard anything about demonic power. The girl suggested that perhaps this was some kind of forbidden magic. Just like black or dark art. But Bao can only use it in one way. This is to use a runestone. Having heard the advice, our hero hastened to thank for the help and turned off the connection. Jean watched the last sparks of magic fade in the air. She was slightly embarrassed by the last conversation with Captain Reed, and now her face turned red like a rose. Taking out the runestone, Bao decided that he needed to use it right now, or rather his ability to achieve a goal within a certain amount of time. The young man pointed the stone towards Kim, but the magic reaching the boy dissipated in the air, since the stone could only be used if the target was in a state of brainwashing. Our hero did not lose hope and tried again and again to use the runestone. Then he tensed up, putting all sorts of forces into the flow of energy. But the brainwashing was not carried out due to the strong magic resistance of his target. And Kola continued to supervise the construction site, checking the plan from time to time. And only Kachko Slime carried the building materials with pleasure. For example, now he was dragging behind him a huge stone on which Kola was sitting. Soon he ordered Kachko Slime to stop. And he mentally noticed to himself that Kachko Slime doesn't even need to be smart since his body works so well. And rising to his tiny legs, he roared again, gathering the goblins into a general gathering. The creatures immediately responded to his call. Now the blue goblins had to lay stones on the outskirts, and the red goblins were in charge of the tree, and the green goblins had to follow Kachkoslime and set traps. With their hands folded at their sides, the creatures nodded their heads, assuring that they understood everything. Then Kola wanted to say something else to Kachkoslime, but then out of the corner of his eye he saw that someone else was standing to the side of them. And out of the allotted ten minutes to cure the little devil, only three minutes remained. Lying under the blankets, Kim was suffocating because he could not breathe normally. Kwong was also excited. Since the runestone doesn't work, what can they do now? But our hero has already done everything in his power. Except for one thing. He stood up and approached the boy. Bao knew that he could not answer him, so he asked him to shake or turn his head at his proposal. With the help of a magic belt, his characteristics and vitality could be restored. Listening to him, Kim silently asked him to use it quickly. But the catch was that Bao couldn't use his magic belt even if he really wanted to. Because for this, it is necessary for the little devil to become his subordinate. Listening to Bao, Kim looked up at the sky where the sun was shining brightly far above them. And our hero continued to tell him that, of course this is not a demonic force or something like that, and perhaps even the boy will not get better. However, this is his last and only chance to stay alive. Finally, Bao extended his hand to him before asking if he trusted him in his hands with his life. Such sincerity touched the boy to the depths of his soul, although Kuang was not particularly happy about this. However, this was the only chance to stay alive and Kim extended his hand, mistaking our hero for the owner. But then a shadow fell on both of them from above. Another moment and someone incredibly strong threw Bao aside. The young man stood up, gritting his teeth in anger. And where do all these problems come from on his head? His opponent was a liberated, seductive succubus girl. While protecting the boy, she showed our hero with all her appearance that she would never let him take possession of him. But Kim was not happy about her sudden appearance because his life was on the brink of death. However, the succubus believed that it perfectly fulfilled the role of protection. To clarify the situation, Bao, defending himself from her attacks, clarified that he wanted to make the son of the demon king his subordinate. And calling the light by its proper names made a big mistake, because it was necessary to select the right words. Smiling slyly, the girl asked who he wanted to make his subordinate. Pointing towards Kim, our hero again repeated his intentions. The succubus could not forgive him for such impudence. And indignant at how he managed to treat the prince of demons like that, she began to circle around Bao, trying to find his weak spot. Her speed surprised our hero a little and turned his head. The girl admitted that Kim was really a problem child who brought a lot of trouble every day. However, the statement to make him a subordinate sounds too offensive. Therefore, she makes every effort to extract an apology from our hero. Watching what was happening, Kim closed his eyes because he was on the verge of a shameful death. But no matter how much the succubus tried to hit Bao, the young man dodged over and over again. And from time to time he intimidated the girl so that she would not come too close to him. However, she was also a good opponent and the blade of the sword never touched her. According to our hero's observations, she was different from ordinary succubi. She used simple attacks but they were very powerful. Having fled, they ran into each other. Firmly squeezing the girl's fist, our hero complimented her on her good taste. The first thing that caught his eye when meeting this girl was that her hair was cut. The succubus did not expect that she would be discovered and was taken by surprise. 
Not far from the scene of the fight, Kola was puzzling over how the succubus found out about their location. Kachka Slime assured him all the time that Captain Reed was strong enough to resist, but this did not reassure Kola, because she was an unusual succubus. The fact is that in order to focus more on fighting, she cut off her hair filled with magic. She's basically a pervert succubus. After listening to his friend, Kachko Slime did not find anything strange in this, and he continued to do his job. He walked over to one of the concrete blocks and picked it up. But what was his surprise when under the block there was a huge well dug by someone? Looking into the dark hole and not seeing the end of it, Kola advised closing the well back with concrete blocks. And having given the orders, he went again to supervise the construction of the tower, and Kachko Slime closed the well. Arriving in confusion, the succubus stopped resisting, and our hero took advantage of the moment and looking into her eyes said that she was loyal and also an excellent fighter. However, if she continues to resist and interfere, then Kim will really die soon at this rate. And if he's gone, then she'll probably have problems. After listening to him, the girl flew to the boy and casually asked, Why does Bao want to save the demon prince so much, since he is his enemy? Squatting down next to the boy, she stroked his head and took out her cut-off hair as a sign of devotion, and placed it in Kim's hands. And she also didn't understand why our hero wanted to save him, since they had just recently raided the kingdom of Arthur. But that's not the point. Bao didn't care who he was. Having sheathed his sword, he walked up to them with a proud gait. And he said that he was only saving Kim because he was a good person. Kuang did not agree with him in his heart, but nodded his head, saying that he too could not pass by a dying child and not help him. There was one minute left until the end of the limit, but then the boy's breathing evened out, and his heart beat faster. Gradually leaning on the succubus's hand, he sat up. Soon he felt completely good and raised his eyes full of admiration to bow. This is how our hero completed the task. He reached the highest level of intimacy with the demon prince and succubus. For completing the task, he was given the symbol of the army and the prince of demons as a reward. He could turn this thing into any other item of his choice. And Kim continued to claim that he really liked Bao, and he promised that he would make Bao the commander of his corps, but only under his control. But then the game gave our hero a new task. It consisted of creating a dungeon for the army of the Prince of Demons. It turns out Kim is secretly gathering troops to show off his prowess as the Demon King. And Bao needed to become the commander of a unit under the direct control of the Prince and build a dungeon that would serve as a temporary residence for the Kim army. And the boy continued to wait for our hero's answer, impatiently tapping his foot. As Bao expected, it was necessary to first teach the boy a couple of lessons. Approaching the little devil, he squatted down, looking down at him and slapped Kim with a slap for excessive talkativeness. From such a strong blow, the boy flew back. The succubus immediately became agitated. No one had ever beaten the prince of the demon king, but the boy really liked such cruelty. Trying not to show that the bump on his forehead was very painful, he bowed to bow and asked to become his mentor, arguing this by saying that he wants to become just as merciless. Our hero watched him in surprise, not understanding whether the boy was mocking him or praising him. The girl was also incredibly surprised to hear such things from the prince of demons. And the whole point is that Kim wanted to become the most cruel villain. Now mission number two of our hero was to help the Prince of Demons find an evil heart. Bao really liked this mission, but for some reason Kuang thought that something was wrong here. While the succubus was trying to comprehend the situation, and a moment later she also fell to her knees before our hero offering her services. She gladly agrees to rule the world with him. And at the construction site everything was in full swing. Even Kola began to sweat. Now he understood what training meant. However, according to Kachka Slime, Kola has no idea what strength training is. Besides, he was more interested in another question. When will they finally finish? Crossing his arms over his chest, Kola answered him that they must do everything before Captain Reed arrives. But our hero quietly crept up to him and appeared behind him like a genie. Such a sudden appearance was a surprise for the guys. Having examined the work performed, Bao praised his assistants for the fact that they managed to do a lot in such a short time. And then I asked if there was anything extremely unusual. Then Kola remembered the succubus that suddenly appeared which immediately, as if at his call, looked out from behind his back with a little devil sitting on her neck. This turn of events could not fit into Cole's head, and Kachko Slim winked contentedly. He said that everything would be fine. Seeing the bewilderment of his subordinates, our hero clarified the situation that he had made the little devil and the succubus a subordinate. While playing with the girl's horns, Kim began to be indignant that, in fact, he was not a subordinate, but a student. But what's the difference between these two expressions? During this time, Kachko Slime managed to tell Kuang that there was a well below under the concrete blocks, and the hedgehog hastened to tell this news to his owner. At this time, far, far away from them at the other end of the kingdom, Flicker watched his colleague in bewilderment. Putting on his cloak and taking out his sword, Shen ran around the watchtower saying that if only he came across opponents, he would definitely cut them into pieces. By the way, 
A similar cloak for the Knights of the Golden Bird was also given to Flicker. Thanks to these cloaks, they could hide their identities. Soon the captain of the guard climbed up to their tower. Since he and the Golden Bird Guild were leaving the capital in secret, the captain hoped that the guys would keep everything a secret while they were there. Bowing their heads, the knights promised to keep their mouths shut. The guard captain trusted the new Golden Bird Guild, and due to the confidentiality of the mission, only called them, although there was actually no limit on the number of people. Of course, if the secret is revealed, the mission will fail. Now Shen and Flicker had a new task, to find a traitor in the kingdom of Arthur, or rather to find a criminal who was secretly leading the murder of the king in order to prevent chaos in the kingdom. According to the plan, the Knights of the Golden Bird were to go to the villages outside the city, and the Knights will search the polar bear at the borders. These included Ginny with Tarzan and Toilette. Finally, the captain of the guard ordered to bring the traitor alive. After that, Ginny tapped her magic staff and portals began to open above all the knights. And our hero peered thoughtfully into the emptiness of the well. In his opinion, the well was not simple. Hearing this, Kachkoslim rolled his eyes contentedly. After all, he had proven to Kolya several times before that there was something wrong with the well. After thinking a little more, Bao sent them both further to build the tower, after which he found a rope and tied it around his waist. Before stepping onto the rim of the well, he reminded the little devil and the succubus to do what he told them earlier. And smiling radiantly at everyone, he pushed off the ground with his foot. After which, hugging Kwong like a stone, he began to fall down. The rope was quite long, but soon the coil unwound and Bao hung in the air. He had a strange feeling about this place and decided to go down to the very end. Taking out his sword, he cut the rope. And in order not to crash, he combined with Kwong's auras and emitted high-temperature fires that blocked melee attacks. Subsequently, a large explosion occurred with a huge release of air. Thanks to this, they managed to survive the landing. As a reward, Bao rewarded Kwong with a gem, thanking him for his excellent work. When the fire went out and the dust began to settle, our hero looked around. Just as he thought, there was something inside the well. In front of them, a huge hole had been made in the concrete wall. While the young man was peering into the darkness and thinking, something landed near him and he barely had time to jump to the side. He did not expect that there would be monsters at such a depth underground, which will surround him on all sides. I didn't think that just from his one touch on the fiery aura the monster would burn. Then it turns out that fire is the best defense against enemies. Filling the sword with an aura of flame, he prepared himself and ran into the very heart of the cluster of monsters. Soon all the monsters were burned. However, from such a high temperature, even Bao began to suffocate. Walking along the cleared path, he soon came across a dead end. Adjusting his cap, Kwong shook his head. It cannot be that there is no further passage. However it was so, our hero even deliberately felt the walls, but to no avail. In addition, since the monsters do not regenerate, which means that they are not in the dungeon. But Kwong was worried about something else. How will they get out of here now? Everything was simple. The summoning stone will help them with this. After a couple of seconds, Kachko Slimi began to appear from the air in front of them. He was a little dissatisfied that out of all the subjects he was called, but what could he do? At IG Soft, researchers and developers continued to work on the Song Bao problem. According to observations, Bao unknowingly began to train at a certain time. Now there were no more problems with the transfer of nutrients. But another problem arose. Soon our hero Kwong was bombarded with questions. Why did he summon Kachko Slime? But the young man only smiled mysteriously and snapped his fingers, causing a spark. After which he illuminated the darkness around them. The place where they were was simply huge. In his opinion, it simply could not be empty here. There had to be at least some kind of Easter egg. After all, cards exist for a reason. And probably like with the library, there is some kind of mystery that needs to be solved. Soon it began to seem to him that there was a tunnel behind one of the walls. Calling Kachka Slime, he asked him to start digging in this place. Hearing the request, Kachka Slime began to smile. Finally, he gets to do his favorite thing again. Since they cannot dig with their bare hands, Bao decided to make them pickaxes. What irritated him most was that he had a bunch of items in his inventory that he couldn't even sell. And then a wonderful idea came into his head. If they don't find anything after the excavation, he can use the space in the well as a warehouse. He liked this idea extremely and he immediately began to pull out all sorts of things. Although to Kwong from the outside, it seemed as if he had decided to turn the well into a trash can. Entering the office, the developer saw the researcher in a depressed state and decided to support him. But everything turned out to be much worse. Inside the game, Captain Reed has disappeared. However, how is this even possible inside the game? The worst thing is that for 30 minutes, the researcher could not find the location of Captain Reed, and the game said that he was missing. Considering that Astrum's game was open world, it would be extremely sad if they lost his signal. Although maybe this is an Easter egg? Very often in other games, artificial intelligence can create a space in which you cannot interfere. Is it possible that something similar was created in the game Astrum? 
suddenly a guess came to the minds of the developer and researcher. When they created artificial intelligence, they made it so that it was impossible to contact the creators. Then their colleague ran into the office and said that they had managed to find Captain Reed, because we received its teleport signal. And our hero, as if nothing had happened, watched as Kachkoslim happily made excavations. And he was even a little jealous that after so many unsuccessful attempts to find nothing, Kachkoslim was still full of hope. Soon Bao wanted to teleport, but since he did not have enough statuses for teleportation, nothing happened. He tried to teleport again and again but was inconsolable. Without losing hope, our hero climbed into his inventory, and I found a purification potion. Maybe it will help? Taking out the plug, he splashed the potion on the sword of the polar bear knight. 